in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed not the issue i like us to agree hold your hands together we're going to pray we'll command and declare that our borders are sanctified in the spirit lift your voice and begin to pray we command the spirit of infirmity to give way in the name of Jesus, Kado Jada Barakoto Soto Balada Bala Ende Katakata Barato Sada Baria Kato Jebrediska. We bind you, we cast you in the name of Jesus. We decree and declare as the church of the Lord Jesus Christ that the spirit of infirmity is rebuilt over the body of Christ over this territory le katakata baraka to shekete bash matakata branda gasoto preke de gara balara bash ja branda gete kale karya da baka sabrondos zegete gete shabalaros em braka to koto prakata baratus pray Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us in the book of Jude how that when Archangel Michael was carrying the body of Moses to heaven, Satan stood there and there was a contention. He was interested in the body of Moses. Because you see, no spirit can operate on earth until there is a body that cooperates with it. It's not about sickness. It's not about infirmity. It's a search for bodies. It's a search for vessels. When Jesus was about to rebuke the spirit in the man in Gadara, all the spirits, they said, look, the only reason why we can function in this territory is because there is a body. Now, at least help us minimize the punishment as you banish us from this body. Don't banish us from the territory. Why? So that peradventure, if that man becomes available, we can return. I'd like you to pray. I sanctify my body. I decree and declare it cannot be an instrument of sickness. It cannot be an instrument of infirmity. Lift your voice and pray. I speak to my blood. I speak to my blood. I speak to my bones. I decree and I declare in the name of Jesus Christ. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in my mortal body. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in my mortal body. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in my mortal body I cause sickness I cause the eaters of flesh and the drinkers of blood I cause the drainers of life my body is sanctified pray I cause spells, I cause enchantments and divinations. Their projections will not find expression in my body. I declare that I am immune, sanctified, immune, above divination, 
above necromancy, above projections, no manipulations with the stars will project sickness to my body. Pray. I challenge sickness. I call you by your name and I banish you from my body. I call you by your name and I banish you from my family. I call you by your name and I banish you from my environment. Pray, make sure you are praying. Shabratika to zebres. Lakata praskato pashia. You have a little child, lay your hands on them. I sanctify you. Sato Soto Bekea. No sickness, no infirmity, no untimely death. In the name of Jesus, my body is a temple. Shekatos Koto Prakata. Embretas Kalabatos. Divinity resides in my body. Matata Kosoto Brendekete Lakataya. hallelujah hallelujah one last prayer point that whosoever digs a pit must fall into it i like you to declare open your mouth and cause the human entities that partner with spirits to project evil over the lives the bodies of men don't keep quiet open your mouth Shapa kata 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 lepros koto pariata kata man de so we close the heavens over them we frustrate their counsels in the name of the Lord Jesus the church of the Lord Jesus is alive we are not weak we are not beggarly there is an anointing upon us we represent heaven in this territory therefore we decree we decree we define borders we define spiritual borders for the activity of evil thus far have you come no further shall you go we pass a decree we legislate in the spirit in the name of jesus hallelujah hallelujah before you sit down let me teach you something you see we're teaching on the dominion mandate we'll get there shortly but every time you watch evil loom around your life and you keep quiet and keep silent and hope it will change you have made the biggest mistake are we together evil never never lives by itself are we together don't wait until it happens too late from the onset attack it immediately attack it immediately are we together your phone is missing tomorrow your laptop is missing next tomorrow your shoe don't wait already you know you are, you are sensitive close your door Blast in tongues for 15 minutes. Let me tell you something with Satan. Satan experiments. He pushes something and then sees your depth of spiritual sensitivity. When you are carnally minded, you will look for foolish explanations and then he will suspend it for a while so that you don't pray. He attacks an issue. When he's about to get too much, he knows you will pray so he will relax. You will remain in that condition then he brings another one before you know it you have been eaten over by darkness whether it is in the middle of a night you turn and it looks like you felt something on your face listen listen let me tell you i won't tell you to do something i'm not doing go and ask the devil you wake up and there is a wicked dream an evil dream you went to sleep after prayer 
you are in a period of fasting then he mocks you you lie down to sleep and you see someone comes to sleep with you or one kind of nonsense then you just stretch and say no problem no no light or no light worship or no worship charge yourself call the spirit by name listen let me tell you when men sleep things happen in this realm i have told you you lie down to sleep and men make incantations attempting to project your spirit to realms so that they plant things and you return back you wake up with things you did not sleep with are we together we'll pray again one more prayer just one more prayer i like you to pray and say enough is enough whether you know the name of what is happening to you or not blast in tongues the word has come it's my season of triumph shake it take it out. mysterious disappearances of items mysterious coincidences of bad luck mato soto brigatai Pray online, pray outside. I sanctify my borders. Legate cross kubai. I cross the gates of Leviathan. I cross you in the name of Jesus. I lift up the standard of the blood. I invoke the blood. I invoke the blood. Matos Sodos Kadia. I command the elements of creation to stop cooperating with any human agent that uses the elements of the supernatural to project evil to men. We curse you. We curse you. We curse you by the God of heaven. hallelujah the bible says resist the devil it didn't say discuss it didn't say hope it didn't say wish james 5 13 says is anyone among you afflicted let him pray that's it that's the requirement is anyone afflicted affliction is not just sickness when things are not happening as the word of God said should be let him pray let him pray all I need is you Lord. is you Lord. all I need is you All I need is you, Lord, is you, Lord. All I need is you. That's why we're here tonight. For all I need is you, Lord, is you, Lord. All I need is you. Say, na 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 ma sa na 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 na. All I need is you, Lord, is you, Lord, all I need is you. One more time. All I need is you, Lord, is you, Lord, all I need is you. Hallelujah. Spirit of the living God, we acknowledge you tonight. We're gathered here tonight, connecting from across several cities and nations. Lord, tonight we have come to learn, we have come to receive of the Spirit. We have come to learn from the fountain of wisdom. 
Therefore, we pray that the hallowed bread be broken tonight. Grant us illumination and understanding. Grant us impartation, capacity to rise to deeper and higher dimensions in the spirit. We receive this because we ask and we declare that we will give you the glory in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. Please greet someone and be seated. There's a lot to do tonight. Jesus, we bless you. Hallelujah. For as long as we are alive, we will continue to lift up the name of Jesus. We will continue to see that his glory is revealed. One of the things that the advantages of appearing before God every time is that fear dies in your life. Fear is a very wicked spirit. It's a dangerous spirit. Fear has the ability to magnify anything negative. Are we together? When we come before the presence of God, the things that brought fear to you, when you come and watch other men that God has helped, squash them into pieces and trivialize them, then you go back full of faith. Because Satan loves it when he surrounds you with fear and makes it look as if, ah, this is over. This issue in your life and family, there is no hope for it. These are the kinds of platforms where we call the devil a liar. And we don't just say it by calling him. We, we prove the excellency of the victory and authority of the spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We're discussing the dominion mandate. This is part two. And um, what a joy. I consider this topic very, very, very instrumental to our understanding and our growth. As you know, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ has a ministry. And one of it is not just to be the light of the earth, but to equip believers. Our assignment as ministers of the gospel is to prepare believers, to open them up to all the dimensions and the possibilities that are required to be effective in representing Christ. Are we together? And so we piece together all the dimensions that will be required to grant you access to reign. And this for me is one of the, the cardinal teachings of the Christian faith, the dominion mandate, because this encapsulates the will of God right from before the fall of man and he still represents his desire for us today um, we discussed a few things last week we last week was basically an introduction to what I call the original plan it is important for every believer to know and to understand the original plan the average believer has no idea um, as to why we are here what necessitated our being here why the evils um, when you understand the dominion mandate all of a sudden there will be a synergy the happenings around you why the devil seeks to destroy men why the holy spirit was given to us why we must be effective without revelation our commitment will be false and they will not be able to last are we together now so we looked at the original plan and is found in Genesis chapter 1. Let's look at 26. The Bible tells us how that when God was going to make man the prime of his creation, Genesis 1 and verse 26, and God said, let us make man in our own image. We discussed two things. I said how that, number one, Adam was not the first man created. No. Adam was the first man who introduced our dispensation. That is true. But Adam is not the first human species created. The first created in the image and the likeness of God. Are we together? The Bible is full of several instances of beings and events that happened that predated Adam himself. The mere description of the word subdue as part of the, the instructions given to Adam suggests that there is an enemy, an enemy looming somewhere. Hallelujah. And I did tell us that um, it's important for us to understand that the ultimate, please listen, the 
ultimate for the believer is not just heaven now i know that um evangelically we teach that everything is heaven and we're not necessarily wrong in that sense but the whole idea is not just heaven god's idea is not just to save sinners something happened there was once upon a time where the man god created was not a sinner are we together but there was an instruction given so adam was not on earth just because of sin he was on earth doing something sin came and met him interrupted the plan so I, I gave us an analogy last week how many of us remember how that there was an original plan are we together and that plan is contained in the word dominion a system of legislature and governance in one word dominion is governance an exercise of sovereign control now the, the nature of man's dominion must be um, it man was not given absolute dominion man was given delegated dominion there is a difference are we together now the an adumbration of man's dominion was revealed by Joseph in Egypt are we together when Joseph was exalted he said you know I have been made a prime minister the prince every other thing was under his control it was only in the issue of ranking that Pharaoh who was a representation of the type of the father Jesus being Joseph being the type of Jesus and the Egyptian woman he married was a type of the church are we together now so all of those are prophetic events that reveal several things and um, we see how that God gave man authority the Bible says the heaven even the heaven of the heavens has is the Lord's but it says the earth has he given that's a very important thing the earth has he given to the sons of men when man was being given that access to dominion satan had it are we together satan was somewhere around the earth and he had everything clear and from that time he began to seek for a way to negotiate with man and the only way he could get man to fall was to do get man to do what he did treason rebellion are we together he came through eve and then lured adam and i have taught us again in this place how that adam fell willingly everybody say it adam was not deceived the person who was deceived was eve eve was deceived adam fell because of love he didn't fall because of ignorance are we together and that remains true today there are few men who fall because of ignorance it's easy to deceive ladies it's very difficult to deceive men they fall because of love the second Adam also fell because of love Jesus was not deceived the father didn't say just come and look at it and then just close heaven and say I meant to say you should come and die no it was a well calculated thing his wife that Eve had now fallen there was a separation so the second Adam there were many things that parallel jesus and adam he's not just called second adam just because of the nature of sin no are we together now he's called the second adam because he did what adam did and so he looked at his bride and he stripped himself away of his glory and he came to join that bride like adam fell from the glory of god are we together now so redemption is a restoration process redemption was not an initial agenda redemption was a restoration process of course in the infinite wisdom of god a program already had been created like that but experientially speaking right in the garden there was no discussion about apostles and prophets and teachers and koinonia and churches and meetings and all of those no 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 it was about government it was about governance it was about legislature it was about replicating the fullness of the life the glory the character the nature the influence of heaven to be able to find expression across all that territory i hope you know that not every part of earth was like the garden of eden 
the garden of eden was a type of god's intention because as i'm going to be teaching you it is how god advances so he creates a prototype of his intention plants a man there and gives that man capacity to extend that influence so adam's assignment among other things was to be able to piece together the resources that made eden eden and start extending eden and there were two major ways he would do that one by creativity the other by reproduction take note we are going to deal with this we are discussing very deep kingdom issues now reproduction creativity all other dispensations did not know that there was a possibility of reproduction by a man meeting with a woman producing seed it was always creation not reproduction it was our dispensation that introduced another dimension the only way things were extended in dispensations before us was creativity so if you wanted something it was purely a product of invention but now god revealed a dimension of himself you see marriage has nothing to do with a man and a woman marriage is a dimension in god he only brought the woman out of a man so that they will be actors on earth the primary purpose of marriage is not just children the primary purpose of marriage is to reveal something about god then children come as an advantage so when you lose the prophetic implication of marriage the physical activities are just a waste that's why satan likes gay marriage it's not about a man and a man a woman and a woman it's about corrupting a program are we together now yes so when a man likes a man or a woman likes a woman it's not just inordinate desires that's that's not the issue the is is that men are actors on earth and satan is rewriting another script to describe something bad about god because he dwells in light there is no darkness so he brings a man and a woman these are the only actors who can best describe that mystery called marriage so satan is switching scenes and bringing a man and a man and a woman and a woman the realm of the spirit understand the message that is being sent are we together reproduction reproduction i'll be teaching you different dimensions of dominion later on and you find out that authority exercising authority is just one out of the many ways are we together yes there are many facets authority exercising authority is one of them by speaking passing decrees number two the ministry of prayer especially intercession is another system of dominion number three reproduction you are not manifesting dominion if there is no reproduction hallelujah so the fall of man was a veering off of the original plan for many of us the foundation of our christian journey just starts with the cross or the coming of jesus it looks very spiritual but it's wrong the foundation must start right from the beginning are we together i taught you something in theology that we call the law of first use or the law of first mention that means that when you want to examine the character of a word or the the usage of a context you have to search for where it was first mentioned study the context of his usage and that's what you use as a compass are we together now so if you want to know the purpose of man we must go back to the book of beginnings genesis are we together now and then see what god said about that man you don't search around for scriptures on prosperity and wealth and then find out where man just appeared in the scene you must go down from the beginning and god said when man appeared he never had any sound on earth the first sound his ears will hear was the speaking of his creator be fruitful multiply etc etc and all of that so it's important that we look at that and study it very importantly the fall of man led to the necessity of redemption jesus himself coming the entire program of redemption was a restoration program not a restoration to heaven 
not a restoration to heaven please listen carefully not a restoration to heaven a restoration back to god's original agenda even heaven itself as we know is a subset of that agenda revelation tells us clearly i told you the bible finishes with the beginning of a new dispensation am i against heaven no am i against the reality of the fact that saints will be caught up to the heavens no not at all the bible acknowledges that but then it does not stop at us being in heaven we are returning back again right to the earth so it is important that we understand um god's system this series has three main areas we're dealing with the second today the first is what i call the original plan helping you giving you an exegesis of the beginning to understand that god's original idea was not just for us to have cars and houses go to school get married have children train them the way an average believer and well-meaning believer the way an average believer is trained is not makes him or her not to be productive let me tell you something it matters how you are trained and it matters who trains you are we together let me repeat myself it matters how you are trained and it matters who trains you the person who introduced jesus to you did something to you very serious it was more than a message the person who has introduced the faith life and the spirit life to you may have communicated his or her limitations it matters what you are told about satan it matters what you are told about demons it matters what you are told about the holy spirit are we together it matters what you are told about purpose and destiny it matters it's not enough to just have information it is important to study the communicators of those informations because this is where error and limitation came from so we have sincere people who are well-meaning but they have not paid the price to take advantage of the ministry of the holy spirit and the word to study comprehensively the program of god unfortunately our bible colleges our schools of ministry do not do so much justice in opening people to god's blueprint so the entire scope of the average believers understanding of what we call our pilgrimage the journey is this i am born one day i receive an evangelical message and then i'm told to give my soul to someone i cannot see and then i hand over that soul to him and then in in return i hear that he gives me a life whatever that is i just know i have it and then i'm also told that my name is in the book of life meaning i've escaped hell hallelujah glory to god what else do i do i'm encouraged to be a worker in church then i'm 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 encouraged to get a wife or a husband that is like me then two of us are encouraged to make sure we have children are we together then we are encouraged to make sure we train those children as a sign of responsibility then we are told to just live our lives giving glory to god regardless of what happens and then we are told to prepare for death that is that is that is another writer's script that is not god the word of god that liveth and abideth forever is very clear as to god's intention so most believers are largely confused you were in secondary school and they told you just keep moving university just finish up you came from the world into the university from university they say now that you are going into the world and you know all kinds of sympathy happens and then you now enter into the world and people say get a job and you get a job and then get a wife or get a husband have children and then try to have cars depending on your level of carnality if you want to if you, you are broke and nothing happens just manage it and all sorts of 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 teachings that look like they are nice then one day you find out that you are sick you don't know why you are sick and then you go to a man of god who says you are healed and you don't even know why you were healed why is god interested in healing men why is satan interested in afflicting people then you find out that a dear lady gets married listen i'm giving your work your faith work meaning and then the lady is barren and she goes to the doctor doctor i've been a nice lady i didn't live a wayward life what is happening and the doctor says that's what i'm trying to figure out i was trained to study just give me time and the doctor is confused cannot find out what is wrong and the innocent lady lives in pain and her whole ambition is oh god give me a child or give me children 
think how confused we are on earth everybody is trying to suggest to someone how they feel their lives can be better so someone says look if you don't have money your life will be bad and then the other person says so this is what you know i've been looking at okay let me try to get the money then you become a millionaire and you are happy and you find out that that realm has another trouble you cannot even explain are we together and this is how we live we receive advices from confused people who confuse others we mentor our children they grow in that confusion and the earth is just a cycle of failure it is important that among the the curriculum that we are given we must be able to give meaning to our lives that's why people commit suicide why not just because they are frustrated their frustration only amplified the meaninglessness of living that's why people do all kinds of stupid things with their lives abuse the word abuse means abnormal use you will misuse everything god gave you if you do not know why it was given are we together yes when you carry 10 bottles of alcohol with the writings written boldly that it destroys you you are not pouring it on the ground you are transferring it into your body it's called abuse an abnormal use why because you do not know that that body was a loan like you collect a loan from a bank if you collect a loan from a bank and you misuse it you are already signing in for disaster so we abuse our bodies when god gives you a wife and you don't know why a wife came they ask you why are you married you say well i just found out that i was age was not on my side and they said i should find somebody it so happens that this is the scapegoat who i now call and you abuse that innocent woman are we together or vice versa there are women who abuse men you now find out that god gave you a calm person who says sorry for everything and now he happens to be the victim of your emotional confusion your the 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 confusion that surrounds your trying to define your life and you vent it on your spouse and where both of you are bold enough to confront one another the children become the victims it, it is still an extension of confusion when people celebrate golden jubilee they celebrate it angry wondering what they've been doing for 50 years oftentimes most of them are not healthy they can't hear well they can't see well they made costly mistakes in their youthful days that they are paying the price now they didn't have access to the mysteries of the kingdom they've destroyed their lives they are poor they are broke their lives are meaningless it's alarming the rate of suicide right now it used to be in the west you know the developed nations and now even in africa you get up you don't find your child you just see a letter farewell and you see someone on a tree now if we don't do something about this let me tell you right now counseling is big business psychology psychologists are getting a lot of um, um business now because there, there are all kinds of trauma centers not just from plane crash so a human being can be alive and just enter a trauma center and say look i need help why i don't know what i'm doing i'm seeing things i'm hearing voices my life is confused we need to return back to god's blueprint otherwise we are going to live absolutely useless lives when you understand the dominion mandate then marriage becomes useful children become useful prosperity becomes useful education becomes useful are we together when you understand the dominion mandate it will make sense to you every requirement the bible gives so we cut away from god's original agenda and then we keep telling people don't use don't live a useless life live a life of meaning and the person say what is a life of meaning get a job get a job and the person says, okay he gets a job and fights all over his office till he retires aren't you seeing the way our lives are it's a circle think very carefully when you were 10 years 12 years just in with your little friend or your little brother or sister about the confusion in life now look at you are getting to 40 you have joined that vicious circle of confusion even as preachers so many preachers do not know why god gave them a church god just called me and said raise me a people a people of power a people of holiness a people of grace a people of prosperity and we put 
that that team on our churches our members come and they don't exactly understand what we're saying someone gives a testimony oh god gave me a breakthrough we clap but to what end god made me a minister god increased the dimension of his grace then pastors chase after anointing and you ask them why and they say my church is not growing my life i can't i can't live like this no bread on my table i need to access power i need value so they access the anointing like escapism from poverty then when they become a little anointed they are now happy doors of ministry are opening and then honorariums are coming and all of that and then with that that's how people live I want you to refuse to live a meaningless life are we together you must insist somebody now is about to get married tomorrow in this confusion he's confused he's holding the hands of another confused person and then they are starting something they don't even know where he's going will they dance yes will they eat yes will they be happy eventually no no this is not about demons God's original agenda is the key to joy and happiness not money not education ask those who have these things rich people hang themselves and drop their money and will it to a cat why because i have five useless boys in my house give this cat my inheritance a world is gradually demonstrating that disobedience to God is costly so we must return back to see you high and lifted up shining in the light of your glory pour out your power and love as we sing holy 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 open the eyes of my heart lord open the eyes of my heart i want to see you i want to see you there are many of us today our parents are angry with us why because they want you to follow the path they followed and the word of God is already telling you that ah, they like the way their lives are and they, they do not believe that something they are doing is why their life is like that they tell you just follow don't please don't embarrass us just let it be like that oh I want to get married to who? Yeah, the brother he's starting up mm, don't do that you see if you do this we are going to beg are you not seeing the way our lives are? And then people control people and we are victims of men's thinking there's a lot of gap let me tell you something you need to re-examine the concept of age this thing called age the most excellent part of age is the wisdom attached to it if age fails to come with wisdom it is useless did you hear what i said yes that a man i'm not you know we have i have i have so much respect for elderly people you're elderly here i honor you with all my heart but i'm teach. we need to redefine our philosophy of i am old and i am young because there are many old people that are responsible for the pain of people on earth age gives you access it should give you wisdom only age does not just add wisdom on its own at best it can give you sophia human knowledge the fact that you made a mistake does not mean you have found the answer so you can tell us in 1961 i made a mistake did you find the answer you may still be in that ignorant at that point you are just familiar with the problem not the solution how many old people mentor young people you are about to marry and oh no problem i remember i married in 1941 that asked that man's wife whether she enjoyed marriage see her an old woman she would tell you i only enjoyed marriage for three weeks in 40 years that's the person mentoring two people and he said listen to me no i won't listen to you no sir i will respect you but i reject that kind of life you will not define that template for me Do you know why 
God is called the ancient of days. You know why? The, he is called the ancient of days because of one word, wisdom. Take away wisdom because Satan too is an ancient of days. He's old. The Bible tells us Satan is old. What is the difference between him? At least they are old enough. I think any man that is older than 6,000 years is old. Satan is not 6,000 years old. Before 6,000 years, he was already called that old serpent. Yet he's as foolish and stupid as whatever. Because it is only a fool that says in his heart there is no God. And the Bible says even the demons, they, they, they try to ignore it. So they deceive men into believing there is no God. Get your life into your hands and trust God to use the word of God as a compass and redefine your life. Because there are many of you looking at me right now. We are doing what we call jack of all trades, master of none. This is how they taught me to live. Oh. This is how I will live. I have my little job with NMPC. Another person has a job with one, uh, one para, paramilitary. And then we are on our way going. We don't know the purpose of children, so we abuse them. People give birth anyhow and make the children liabilities to men and society. You just come and somebody passes a child to you and say, take care of my child. As if, as if the person was part of the arrival of the child. Why? Because the people doing that do not know the revelation behind Abba, Abba, Father. If Before you source a thing, you must be ready to sustain it. This is what should govern getting pregnant. Not time do we have the resources, the wisdom, the grace, the capacity for a child. If a poor man gives birth to seven children, he's a foolish man. Correct? Not just because he wants to demonstrate that he can give birth. He is Abba, source you must sustain. So you leave those children and they become armed robbers. Remember I told you Satan is looking for bodies. And because those bodies cannot be handed over to God, Satan will find available bodies and they plague our society today kill people rape women and children maim people destroy the peace of society we have violated the dominion mandate and this is why this teaching is very necessary are we together revelation chapter 5 and verse 10 the original plan was what i discussed i spoke to us extensively about the fall of man and I spoke to us about how that redemption was a remedy system. Now that you are born again, you must be able to have a redirection back to God's original agenda. And I said a few things to us. I said how that there are certain conditions that are required. Number one is your natural birth. For you to be able to stand and execute the dominion mandate. One is your natural birth. You must be birthed born of a woman because when jesus came he came to redeem all those who were descendants of adam listen let me teach you something everybody look up hmm. the blood of jesus is only applicable for descendants from adam if you were not part of that dispensation the work of grace and the cross is not relevant to you otherwise satan and demons should also be forgiven because a statement was made on the cross it is finished what is the it everything that had grieved the heart of the father the legal claims of justice had been appeased the bible says he shall see the travail of his soul isaiah saw and he shall be satisfied so if he says it is finished that means the demons that neglected their original estates that are now in everlasting chains alongside satan i've told you satan is not the most wicked of the spirit no he's not the belief that satan is the most wicked of all the spirits the king of all the spirits is is not necessarily error it's just a limiting knowledge because satan is not bound in everlasting chains there are spirits more wicked than him that are bound in everlasting chains the bible says that they were bound even for the sake of the elect are we together God. i pray that god will give us wisdom 
you see how peaceful your life will be this is what satan does not want us to know man of god listen this is what satan does not want your congregation to know because if you don't know this story you won't see the necessity of your victory and you will not know that you have been restored to now begin to walk in dominion and demons will play games with your life they will play games with your destiny you will live your life under the mercy of situations and circumstances so your natural birth then your spiritual birth or what i call a rebirth the bible calls it a regening regeneration regime every possessor of adam's genes born of a woman is born in iniquity are we together now born in iniquity means that legally you are under the influence of satan the prince of the power of the air as wrong as well as the elements in this system and you cannot carry out the dominion mandate with the genes of adam so there is a regening a regeneration are we together now when jesus christ comes into your heart a real miracle happens there the bible tells us there is a translation the bible says he that is joined to christ is what help me one spirit one spirit not two spirits one spirit so christ comes to live in you he creates his throne in your heart tabernacles in you in the person of the holy spirit now watch this the moment that happens you are now ready not to dominate you are not ready to dominate you are ready to now begin the process that restores you back to god's original agenda the dominion mandate now this is where many believers miss it and pastors ah, pastors if you do not understand the difference between prophecy and experience you will mislead people the speakings of the bible are twofold the prophetic communications of god are we together now and the experience of that communication when god speaks from his perspective it is done because god has no past no present no future he's called alpha omega time is not something that god is limited by he is not even limited by eternity eternity is still a subset of him if he dwells in eternity then somebody created it correct are you getting blessed tonight and so you must understand that this god that we are talking about is not limited you must understand his systems and how he works when god speaks he can say sam when you enter that house and by the time your fifth child comes you see that and sam can say i'm not even married that's the speaking of god god will never say when you marry uh -uh. he talks to men as if he's talking to himself this is how, this is why many people do not know god can look at you and say promise take care of these 30 children whereas he doesn't have a job that's god because in his word is also the grace to convert that prophecy to experience so he will not speak to you like he's speaking to a man let me tell you one way to know that a word came from god is that there will be no resources at that point to make it come to pass whether spiritually financially etc if god speaks to you and you have the resource to do it you had your brain or a demon noah build me an ark two stadium two stadium of i mean the ark of noah was stadiums two like that are made of gopher wood how many years plantation agriculturist will give you that noah spent 120 years building that how many years 120 years but the way god spoke it it was as if rain will come next week this is a mistake many people make god can say i have sent you today this is how god speaks because your whole lifetime is still his today so god says today i have anointed you as a prophet to the nations then you get up with lack of understanding the systems of god and now ordain yourself and try to get visa to ghana or smuggle your way to uk and you die somewhere in the forest 
and eat there will be is it a lie no god spoke to you but you did not understand the difference between prophecy and experience it was paul who was teaching the church in hebrew and began to teach them in chapter 2 and told them he says now god did not leave anything under the feet of man are we together now he was trying to quote um, the the psalm of david right what is man that thou art mindful of and then he says but now that's experience in god's eye and in god's mind nobody should be sick in god's eye and in god's mind there should not be one sinner on earth because right from the foundations of the earth the lamb was slain go to the prison is there a thief there please answer me is there a thief that went into the prison today yes so does that mean that the efficacy of the word is not working no it is he already said it is finished and they are still criminals it is finished there are still barren people god will look at someone on a wheelchair and still say it is finished yet he's still there the day that the anointing and the faith of that person comes he enters into the experience of that word that's why god is resting but he says there remaineth a rest not for god for his people what is that rest the experience of his finished work so we keep moving around with ignorance and making a fool out of ourselves and demons are happy and hope we continue like that and then at the end of it the equation does not add up and then we are frustrated and humiliated is god helping us tonight tonight we are going to look at the second aspect and that is discipleship the dominion mandate has three segments number one is a revelation of the original plan the fall of man and the restoration through jesus that's the first the second is discipleship what is discipleship a system of training for reigning a system of reprogramming a system of recalibration into the image and the likeness and then next week we are going to look at the third segment governance so these three segments number one the original plan the fall of man and the restoration process that we call redemption the second is discipleship discipleship is not some some doctrinal curriculum of people no it is the way people are trained to carry out the dominion mandate listen nobody reigns just because you have received jesus remember the scripture that i gave you last week right that they that received two things number one the gift of righteousness number two the abundance of grace so two requirements to reign one you must receive what the gift of righteousness no man can walk it is god's very nature imputed through faith when you believed in the finished work of his son his death the burial the resurrection and the glorification not just the resurrection jesus did not just ascend and is hanging in the sky he is seated it matters because Ephesians starts with the revelation of his seated position so it's not just the death I know great men like Kenyon and all of that talk about the death burial resurrection but it's more than that the death the burial the resurrection and the glorification that coronation was what David saw the Lord said to my Lord the Lord the ancient of days said to my Lord the Christ sit down at my right hand until i make your enemies your footstool hallelujah discipleship why why discipleship let me tell you something because you see when you receive jesus christ everybody listen carefully when you receive jesus christ automatically it gives you access the life of god is in you give us genesis chapter 1 please verse 26 god created man there was a twofold design and this design this configuration must be gotten back for man to be able to walk in dominion number one is what his image the first purpose of discipleship is to carve in you the experience of the image of the christ 
the spiritual dimension the spiritual composition are we together now paul said this he says my little children in whom i travail until christ be formed in you the formation of christ in reality the indwelling of the word is a reflection of his image because the bible says let us make man in our own image and the bible says christ who is the word is the express image of the godhead he that has seen me has seen the father are we together now philip said show us the father and then he sufficient he said philip have you been so long with me philip and yet you have not seen the father whoever has seen me has seen the father so christ came as the image so man must first be made in christ now listen let us make process let us make process the moment that life of god comes the making is not automatic the life is there the spirit of god is at work in you if it were automatic then you do not need the word and you do not need the, the ministry of the holy spirit the formation of christ now please everybody listen this is one of the indices for spiritual growth the moment believers get born again if you have ever wondered what next let me tell you what next is the spiritual development of those people so that the life the character and the traits of christ will be fashioned in them are we together now the image so pastors apostles prophets evangelists together that fivefold ministry they work harmoniously to help people achieve this are we together the image of christ being formed in you that's what you call character that's what you call the fruit of the spirit the fruit of the recreated human spirit when you read galatians chapter 5 verse 16 paul was teaching the galatian church and he said this i say then please give it to us galatians 5 and verse 16 we'll read 16 then we'll go down to 22 he says this i say then walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh so the key is what walking in the spirit you must be trained to walk in the spirit the bible says to set your minds on the things above and not on the things of the earth it takes a training the name of that training is discipleship discipleship is not just an indoctrination into a church's curriculum and beliefs are we together because many of us hate the word and i understand because it has been used religiously by people who are not even born again discipleship is how people are made to reign verse 22 it says but the fruit of the spirit there are all kinds of theological understandings but the fruit of the spirit is love listen joy peace long suffering gentleness goodness faith meekness temperance he said against such there is no law meaning that it is impossible to be a violator with these conditions this is the atmosphere of the spirit the fruit of the spirit combined creates an atmosphere that becomes formidable no power and force of hell can penetrate that all these things you call the fruit of the spirit are and they are ingredients that structure something the bible says that we are built into a spiritual house like living stones one block upon the other you are adding love joy peace patience gentleness let me tell you every attack on a believer's life comes when there is a lapse in one of these are you hearing what i'm saying listen are, are we learning am i am i blessing you every attack on your life will come based on an advantage that was taken as a result of the absence or the deficiency of this from where comet um how does the bible put it quarreling and all this among you you see that when there is no love there will be jealousy when there is no love there will be bitterness when there is no joy the bible says for with joy shall you draw out of the wells of salvation 
is that true it says the joy of the lord is your strength when your spirit is weak there is no joy joy is not laughter joy can only be given by the spirit unbelievers have happiness only believers can have joy is of the holy ghost joy has nothing to do with circumstances it is a state of being that is based on a revelation and the presence of the holy ghost count it all joy my brethren when you go through die how can you rejoice knowing this knowing this this is the secret of the joy knowing this without knowing it you cannot have joy so when you are going through diverse situations you lost a loved one you lost a job something is not working well ordinarily you should be sad but knowing this there is a revelation that the trying of your faith work at patience and then that let patience have her full course then it will make you mature it will make you unfruitful knowing this hallelujah are we blessed we must build the fruit of the spirit in people you can be educated as educated as anything and lack gentleness goodness meekness and never be promoted correct you went to school but you are not gentle at all the company throws you away because you lack the fruit of the spirit do you know all the the commandments of nigeria are a human attempt to get men to have the fruit of the spirit so when they tell you pay a bill of hundred thousand naira and all of this is their own way of trying to force you to feel the pain of stealing somebody's thing it is their way of trying to give you love when they jail you because of impatience they are trying to get you to be what to have long suffering because you are not patient that's why you wanted one million in one day and you jumped somebody's fence or you stopped a luxurious bus let me tell you the chaos in our society is because there is the absence of the image the charisma, the image of christ every law when you whip your child it is because he violated something that is here when a husband beats a wife something is missing peace sister when a brother comes to say i want to marry i want to marry you do you know why you don't say yes immediately you go back and start cross-checking you don't even know this is what you are cross-checking does this guy love me it's not just love god alone does he have joy this brother is an angry brother peace i watch what he did to somebody one day long suffering this guy looks like a hustler he puts his hand in everything is he gentle no the way he approached me was bad is he good no he's greedy does he have faith he come you know and all of that and when you calculate all those things the other side of the equation creates your response and you go back and say no now you may not know that this is what you were checking when someone is advising you he's helping you society can never go into decadence when the image of christ is enforced the image of christ is the unifier whether you are from Kogi state, Plateau state, listen to me. Whether you are Yoruba or Igbo, all those disparity in culture that is as a result of bad habits can be neutralized if the image of Christ is formed in believers. So when you see someone who is Hausa and someone who is um, Igbo or someone who is Yoruba or someone who is from the South South, four of them, you will not see any noticeable differences. Why? Because they have allowed the genes of Adam that was a part of the course that came through their earth and programmed something. Oh, the men from this place are stupid. The men from this place are irresponsible. When you allow the character are we learning the dominion mandate it says man was made in the image it was not possible for adam to hate it was not possible for him to be impatient how did man fall because there was a pastor that said something satan became that preacher that's why when god came he said who told you not who showed you a voice reprogrammed you so how will men return back to this a voice will reprogram men the spirit of god is in his words 
as you are hearing this something is happening to you you are now seeing that this is not the issue of marry from here or from here this is not the issue of i am from bielsa i am from south south in our place this is how we do it all those our place when you talk like that let me show you whose descendant you are on earth there are two families one those who are connected to adam and everything adam came with two those who have been redeemed 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 into another family so you cannot look at me and say you come from so so place your people are drunkards i don't know who they are i've been called out of every tribe genesis please give us revelations 5 verse 9 i want you to read it god has to deliver us verse 9 one two no gen um revelations 5 media 5 verse 9 revelations revelations let's read it one okay verse nine five verse nine thank you okay read it one to go and they sung a new song uh-huh saying thou art worthy to take the book and open the seals thereof for thou was slain and has redeemed me unto god how by your blood out of kogi plateau state emo Enugu, out of the irresponsibility that comes with the men in that place out of the pride out of the selfishness out of the hatred the bitterness he has redeemed i've been called i sympathize with my people but i'm not part of that tragedy i am another tribe i've been carved out listen if you don't believe this thing you are not a christian it's not just that it's bad you are not a christian at all what else do you believe we have been called that's why in koinonia here you don't see anybody do anything which tribe i don't even want to know where you are coming from i know that there are two families the ones on earth and the ones in heaven we are all related the blood the veil torn a family no we no man after the flesh oh your father is this i'm not saying don't be sympathetic to people in your area or whatever jesus started preaching from the jews but some of this carnality this tribalism and this these garbages we bring there is a thief in every tribe there is a fool in every tribe there is a devil in every tribe every tribe has witches and wizards there are poor people in every tribe so it's just that we, you know we make it look just because you saw more northerners looking stupid you come up with a theology that there are all more Igbo people and say every Igbo person is it's just money monger is a lie there are people who have exempted themselves called out not everybody is a money monger not every lady is a materialistic person just looking for a millionaire it's a lie not every brother is an irresponsible person not knowing where he will go some people have seen the end they have seen you know what i'm doing to you is a reprogramming this is discipleship i am unifying you now it is on the strength of this you can call somebody brother and sister that issue of brother and sister for many people is carnal it's just carnal because you were told to say it brother um, alpha brother femi and the rest but when men like kenneth e hagen rw shambach when they used those names it was out of this revelation i do not know you in the flesh but if you are in christ we are brothers you are welcome they extend the right hand of fellowship everybody say the image we need the restoration of that image there are many people who are not spiritual live likeness we're coming there we must teach you how to be like christ be like christ be like christ that's the image the image talks of being the likeness talks of doing the image talks of being being who you are not what you do let's go back to genesis please give us verse 28 we'll discuss more 28 um next next week 1 verse 28 genesis
now everybody i want you to observe something and god blessed them and said listen carefully be fruitful he never talked of having anything you be it first then later on he now said have dominion so god's focus when he's beginning to work with man is in being first before having we have reversed it somebody gets born again today and we say you must have you must have a car you must have a house which is he he's having something he has not become he's trying to have the likeness no image so one million naira comes he has but he has not become so it would destroy him are you saying that now yes have a wife but he has not become a husband so it destroys him the primary strategy and pattern god's kingdom pattern for discipling people and nation is to focus on their being before they are having listen those who write programs for foundational classes in churches must subscribe to this otherwise you are going to produce a powerless carnal many times devilish believers that's why there are witches and wizards in church because we are passionate about having so if i am born again and in two weeks i come with a flashy shoe flashy cloth i'm showing you how much i help me preach back to me i'm showing you how much i on the strength of that you will say i have faith and the brother who has just one trouser but the gift of the spirit the fruit of the spirit is working in him we look at him and we say no this one you don't have so because you don't have the word is not working our focus is on having spiritual men rank and rate people first by being so i can look at you and all you have is one trouser one bible but i see christ formed in you you are on your way fulfilling the dominion mandate i know that this guy will soon be a principality listen believers let me preach to you stop focusing on having focus on being first the image comes before the likeness is god speaking to us this is a message to someone already because our society is full of falsehood men and women who are obsessed in having having why because we want to prove we live in a carnal world that only interprets and rates you based on what they can relate with none of these fruits of the spirit is something that is tangible in itself their manifestation can be tangible as you relax you relate with people and environment but you cannot know so i look at this brother and what he has is peace what he has is joy and i think those things are cheaper than money so the brother would rather kill the agenda to being and then focus on having when god begins to deal with a man you find out that the curriculum he gives you has nothing to do with things like teaching of prosperity it's going to be prayer first you are filled with the holy ghost are we together and then you begin to teach he's drumming on you issues of character holiness morality you have to greet people you move around and think i am from this i am a yo-yo guy and he says look drop all that thing oh i am if nobody talks to me i was a capon in this and god says that's that's your business and when you want to mess up he tells you listen nebuchadnezzar was not what he had he had money he had power so he could run his mouth and talk nonsense and then he was made to become a beast for how many years seven years a beast with the brain of a man the moment nebuchadnezzar recovered he became a preacher read your bible never empower people who have not become it's dangerous it's a lesson many of us will have to learn that you are a millionaire does not mean you carry a small child who has not become and give him money that's why i like Igbo people when they are doing business they bring in an apprentice no matter how rich that man is there is a limit to the exposure of that child is that true he now begins to do business and they study him one day they will leave money in the drawer five hundred thousand and throw some small things scattered and then the man will go out he will come back and find out that one thousand was missing and he will keep quiet that boy has not become 
the day he ever says settle me the man will say i will slap you if you ever talk of settling you have not become you want to have you have not learned integrity you have not learned character you have not learned submission no hmm. is god teaching us being have you become an expression many of us today i can show you that the reality of god's image has not been found formed in you because that anger is still there you've been born again for five years you pray in tongues more than everybody but let somebody just say something small your name is sam and somebody just said uh, john uh, sorry what's the name you don't know my name look i i i know who i am if you do this is you think it's a sign that you are spiritual no I can look at your life and rank you spiritually in a moment. I don't have to see a vision. Away with your cars. Away with all the money and the checks and all the prestige and the English and etc. All those things could not have him. I look at your life. When I look at your life, I'm searching for the Christ. The word of God already painted a picture. And then he says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Then the Bible says he had something and was something but he gave them up and became 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 not possessed the possession happened when he became therefore god had so highly exalted him and given notice that people first became before they had the secular system reverses it packaging and falsehood is trying to portray something you are not so i borrow a shoe i borrow a suit i borrow watch are we together i borrow makeup i borrow hair i borrow anything what am i trying to do it's not that i i'm trying to show you i'm not cheap bottom line correct whether i'm cheap or not is 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 my own issue but i want you to know i am so conscious of what your perception about me that i don't mind faking everything around it but someone can sit down with gary and say no problem i'm not ashamed this is where i am now i will take it with honor and dignity if i don't look if i look cheap to you like that no problem i agree with the process but i am becoming next time somebody looks at you and tries to make you feel like you are a useless person you you cannot do this and that no problem you are becoming you are becoming line upon line this is what is happening to you in koinonia many of you do not know what is happening to you god has already given you a vision you will be a great prophet a great apostle but you are saying oh god nobody has seen me god says sit down you are becoming you want to have access to the mic you want to have access to a church your body is itching you to have access to lead a program and god says sit down you first become before you have is god speaking to us discipleship leaders learn to discern people who have become before you give them access don't give people access as a general thing if there are four people three people you now say oh you have given you too much access let me share it with this no in the kingdom distribution is be, be as a result of a careful study i have discerned you can fake all those things and act like it but the truth is that if you are not it will show he said by their fruits not by their gifts by their how do you know them by their a gift is dash a fruit is a sign of maturity so someone insults you and says emeka do you know that when you were entering the university i already had phd and that thing stinks you and you're like i'm a doctor oh, don't talk and the old man adam adam wants to resurrect with his foolishness and all of a sudden that regening has been crystallized and you laugh and say god bless you ah, ah. and he says is it the emeka that i know that used to beat everybody i heard of a regening let me tell you if you claim you are born again and there is no evidence of transformation you need help you need counseling you need a retreat praise the lord there are so many there are angry pastors there are wicked pastors there are angry people there are all kinds of 
arrogant people. My name is so 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 and so and so. Do you know the one? You, we, we are looking at you and we are still seeing your culture. If I still look at you and see your village, then you are trying to say that calling out of tribe and nation has gone. It's not, it's not yet real. Discipleship. Training for reigning. Bringing you into the culture of the kingdom. Their way of life. This is how we live in the kingdom. We live through the law of love. We live through the law of joy. We are peaceful people in the kingdom. Ah, my temper will kill somebody. Oh, somebody hold me. You are, you are acting. The moment you are acting like your village, the old man is attempting to resurrect. You must keep it dead. We do these things, and usually there are also other carnal people like us who hail us. You know, that hailing thing can be so demonic if we are not careful. <clears throat> Remember, they hailed Jesus and they said, Hail King of the Jews. A few weeks later, on the same people said, Crucify him. Say, You say, Yes, you are looking at me, crucify him. Let his blood be on our head. We have to be careful. There is one who deserves to be lifted and hailed forever. Our job is to confirm into that image. Here we stand, David Damson, and lift our hands, and we will hail Yahweh. Hail Yahweh. Here we stand and lift our voices. Together we hail Yahweh. Hail Yahweh. We will hail. Pastor, your first assignment to believers is to make them spiritual. The first assignment of a man of God to believers is to extract carnality. Carnality means a way of living. They must be aware of the divine life, the divine nature, the presence of the Holy Spirit. You turn people to become spiritual. The life of God is in me. I'm not ordinary. I was born by an ordinary man, an ordinary woman from social state. But now, I am a possessor of God's life. Literally, not just some Christian gimmicks. No, I believe it. It's a fact. It's true. How many believers are aware of that divine nature in them? It tells the way we respond. The Bible says, he that cometh from above is above all he that cometh from above he that cometh from above is above all he that is of the earth is earthly i come from above born of god whatsoever is born of god overcome it overcome it overcome it challenges are not unusual defeat is what is unusual whatsoever is born of god overcometh the world and this is the victory that overcomes even our faith but as many as believed him even to them that believed upon his name gave them power to become power to become power to become power to become they looked at paul ah, ah. paul who used to kill people saul that would collect a letter and go and slaughter people what happened spirituality listen this is not an issue of being charismatic if you don't train your people to be supernatural to approach life and approach things with the consciousness of the divine life the consciousness of divinity there are great men of god all around the world who have spent their lives and spent the years of their lives bringing the church into a consciousness reprogramming and recalibrating our mind that the believer in partnership with the holy spirit is invincible 
we must restore these teachings there are many carnal believers on earth in a bit to balance in a bit to teach we have made people carnal helpless no matter what happens they say oh well things just happen like this no you are in every way divine that's why we don't walk in signs and wonders how do you stand and stretch your hands to somebody and expect a transference how do you do that how do you stand and speak there is no wire tied to you to someone outside because carnally speaking i can only see with my optical eyes but when you step back and and walk in the realm of the spirit then you know that the vistas of the spirit are not 2020 infinity infinity left only to your faith so i can stand here and see someone in overflow three and speak and expect the power of god to touch that person why i wasn't born this way it's called spirituality there's too much carnality that's why when you tell people god will bless you they still want you to they want to reduce themselves and many pastors this is the limitation of exaggeration on education when you think that because i'm educated i have a master's in this i have a phd in that now there are very educated people in this place but when people trust their education and then you see them castigate spiritual things anything that does not subscribe to the law of dy dx they fight it are we together mm. You anoint somebody say what is this with this oil they write all kinds of articles titan is a scam by men of god to raise money you see them and then at the end of that ungodly blog they now say my name is pastor so so and so i'm a pastor with living christ parish or whatever it is and that is deceptive because somebody will say ah, this is a pastor and you know carnal people will relate to those things immediately because they are carnally minded are we together anything that massages the flesh they like it once you challenge people why should you come and spend the night praying what is all this blah, 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 thing 10 hours five hours three hours please we are not human beings god gave us a brain and they say that to castigate spirituality the bible says through faith hebrews chapter 10 and verse 3 hebrews chapter 11 and verse 3 through faith we understand please give it to us through faith we understand that the world systems 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 were framed by what please help me they were not framed by cement and water they were framed by an invisible substance called the word of god so that the things which were seen were not made of things which do appear that's why god tells somebody that by this time next year you will be a landlord and spirit wants to receive but the carnality in his mind will fight it how shall these things be seeing that i know not a man and he says have you forgotten the power of the highest this is the mystery that makes things happen i want to show you why we don't get results god has declared that this is a year of triumph but only spiritual people can receive a carnal man receives not the things of the spirit neither can he understand them why because they are spiritually discerned let me tell you how to know you are not growing by how much you rely so much on your senses and how embarrassed you are to be spiritual about life because there are people who are embarrassed to be spiritual not just that they don't like it it's a thing of shame it's a thing of shame oh you are playing and just playing a worship song and is entering your spirit i beg we are human beings a worship song entering my spirit what is there you are listening to all kinds of music you don't know the difference are you seeing now many people in church you have a selection there's gospel music there's another one by a a, 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 a secular artist that you want i don't have a problem with secular artists i only have this a problem with the spirits behind them i love them as people but there's a spirit behind them music is not all about melodies music is about sounds and the access that those sounds give spirits into your life so someone tells you look i went to school this i went to school he said much learning make thee mad 
I went to school. Please allow me to play this song. So you just play women of faith for a while, just to ease the guilt of feeling carnal. Then somewhere in the selection, something just comes. Babylon, Babylon, then to witchcraft, to witchcraft, and you are lying down. Your body is sleeping, your spirit does not sleep. And something is happening to you. How many of you have listened to a message and fell asleep and it continued playing? And you followed it. How many of you were sleeping and you were acting what that message was saying? It now becomes graphic. Not just that you are hearing. Suddenly you find yourself in scenarios doing certain things. Making confessions. These are spiritual things. The ancient knew this. We who are modern people have become so bankrupt of spirituality. Pastors, let your people be spiritual. Don't pity them because they prayed five minutes and they are feeling tired. And you say, no, you know, our church, there are balloons everywhere. Let's not make people feel. You are praying and somebody falls down and the way his head hits the, the, the chair. Even you, you say, Kai. hallelujah, amen. Let's talk. Why? Do you stop a baby when he's walking and he tries to fall? You allow them. Ah, yes, you say sorry, but you don't stop the work. We must be spiritually minded. That's why the gifts of the spirit cannot flow in us. We're not spiritual. That's why you cannot believe that God can open you up. That's why when you hear testimonies, the testimonies come to a carnal mind and you start looking at the people scientifically. I hope they are lying hepatitis cancer this lady that i know how about allah it's just that koinonia where everybody will just keep quiet but me we 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 know at that were you blind blind when because of how people are carnally minded there are people who don't believe anything even if they see somebody fall down they will still say somebody pushed him somewhere Hapa. believers you know sometimes when people argue i say ah, ah prophecy you hear them say they gave somebody the names of people maybe there are people doing it but is it easy to read to to keep names try it is it easy to act like that carnality because we're not spiritually minded if by next week god opens a door for david down we can look and people will now say this guy he taught something. We always credit unusual happenings to the realm of the spirit. That is a clue that to remain unusual, you must remain in the spirit. You are like mere men. There is nothing worth celebrating. The dominion mandate is a restoration into a life of spirituality. That the spirit realm governs the physical realm. Yes, it does. The spirit realm you must build yourself the divine nature of God the character of God the second dimension let's look at it quickly is the likeness please give it to us again Genesis 1 26 likeness talks of the functionality how God functions the image of God talks about who God is his being but his likeness talks of how he walks believers there are some of you who god saved many people through your hands but you don't know how to build them because you have not been taught the first thing is to help them become spiritual that's why when we when people get born again here we introduce them to the prayer department not just to be workers in the house why because praying they are filled with the holy ghost they are praying you begin to teach them the value of the word of god you begin to teach them the value of communion you begin to teach them the value of corporate fellowship these are foundations then when they are strong then you begin to teach them how to walk like god you start teaching them speech everybody say speech the first teaching on how to function like god is how to speak like him hmm. you reign you reign you reign you reign Kadosh. you are mighty on your throne you reign 
You reign, you reign, you reign. God of God, you are mighty on your throne. Then you begin to learn that he has made us unto our God. Listen, kings and priests. Your priesthood talks of your ministry to God. Your ministry spiritually. That kingly dimension talks of governance and legislature. As a priest, the jurisdiction is a secret place. The place of incense. The place of ministry where you send that incense, it will rise to heaven. The prayers of the saints, the intercession, fellowship, communion, koinonia, that's priesthood. Then you take away that priestly regalia and you put on your crown and your signet ring and you hold your scepter and step out. That is legislature. That is governance. Everyone must manifest this king priest dimension. You are a priest when you come to the house of God. You are ministering to God. You are offering up worship and intercession for the saints. You are advocating for the destinies of men. You are communing with God Almighty. That's priesthood. Then you take on that regalia of kingship. And then you legislate. And the Bible says where the word of a king is, there is, please help me, where the word of a common man is, there is sound. But where the word of a king is, so I have been made a king and a priest, not unto my village, unto God. And so I can legislate. Listen, the first thing that must begin to change in your life to prove that you are functioning like God is your speech. Your speech. Ah, we are the weak ones. We are the ones who are this and that. Uh -uh. You know, the Bible says, do not say before an angel I made a mistake. Your speech, it matters. Are we together? Your, your words begin to be cultured by the word of God. You don't speak all kinds of things and invoke woes upon yourself. Your communications become spiritual. Bless you. Good morning, sir. Oh, Aluta Continua. Victoria Escarta. You are prophesying. Others are speaking. They are not kings. But you, you have become a believer. You have been redeemed. Yet you are still speaking. You have come out of Egypt. Egypt is still in you. And now, when you speak, you are sending sounds to the realm of the spirit. And you are programming things. They speak and it doesn't happen. You speak and it happens. The suffering continues. You massage hardship. Pressure puts you and pushes you. And everything that comes out is your, Hey! Why you? Why you? And, and you, all this kind of very, very unbelieving talk. Hallelujah. You hear a bad report in the name of Jesus Christ. A thousand may fall by my right. That's a king speaking. Ten thousand by my, by my right side. None shall harm me. Only with my eyes will I see and behold the reward of the wicked. Ah, I will make sure you don't marry. And she tells you to your face. And you smile. A cause causeless shall not stand. There is a mystery that... No, you see, all this threat. The, the woman said this. Ah, uh ah. -uh. A cause, causeless, shall not stand. Are we together? Yes. Will you ever finish this house? The hand of Zerubbabel that started this work. It's not something you just reminisce in your mind. It must be vocalized. It must be vocalized. I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. The Gentiles come to my light. Lord, favor surrounds me like a shield. This is a believer talking. Let me tell you what ordinary people would do. The people in our villages know this. You see what they do during festivals. The major activity in festival is talking and dancing. Then death follows later on in the evening. People start dying because people are talking, talking, chanting things. You are moving around. Shakata balakata. You just sense a presence that is not of God. Uh, don't sit and say, Kai, I'm not sure. Be sure by praying in tongues. Start tongues first. Let, let praying in tongues precede you while you are verifying. So that should in case you can be praying and hear a shout from another room and say, oh, I see. 
there are human beings that carry spirits they are innocent they are on the way they are on their way coming to your house to introduce spirits not unwillingly but all of a sudden you sense an urge and you begin to pray and they call you and say sorry i just feel like not coming and you know that not only have they revealed something to you they themselves need to be helped you can easily know the spirits that control men by their reaction when you pray because the spirit influences them to act in certain ways that's why many of you when you finish praying in your house that's the day everybody quarrels you i teach you the mystery now the moment you pray agitations from everyone you go you enter your room and the kindest person in your room is attacking you the devil is sending a response if you know you attack him back with joy 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 when you turn to canada don't shout at me yes i'm coming back from koinonia say you claim you are coming back from the church and look at how you match this i'm sorry You reign, you ancient Zion's king, Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Break forth, thou fountains of the deep, and weep, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. So you learn how to speak by faith, Mark 11. 22 23 if thou shalt say give it to us jesus is teaching the disciples how kings speak he's teaching them the language of royalty listen this thing is not just some some you know many believers after working for a while we claim that those who do these things are baby christians it's a joke a principle that jesus himself introduced nothing in your life will ever change until you sustain capacity to command it to he told Job, Hast thou commanded thy morning? If you don't command it, something else will impregnate your morning. And Jesus answering said unto them, Have faith in God. The correct rendition there is, Have the faith of God. Operate like Him. For verily I say unto you, Now, whoever shall say to what? Say to what? So it is okay to speak to things. Katakota satire not just to human beings jesus our high priest spoke to a mountain spoke to a tree who told you they don't hear biology did not teach you that they hear but jesus the spiritual teaches you that they can hear who told you the earth does not hear who told you that when you stand and speak over your family miles and kilometers apart they don't hear so you can stand and begin to legislate they call you at home and they say in the last three days everybody has been sick you say okay i know what to do and sometimes it's not just becoming a priest you jam the door put your crown carry your regalia Zekatos i send the wind on errand carry the anointing from here to that location you must believe this thing i'm teaching you i'm programming you to be spiritual and how to function like god if thou shalt say unto this mountain be thou removed that means when you speak to things you must be specific specific give us this day what do you want ah i want i want to do well that's a vague and careless prayer you must call it by name whatsoever adam called that was the name thereof so you name your destiny peace you name your marriage joy are we together you don't turn and say this stupid husband no way my marriage is heaven on earth i call it what it is I refuse to be poor i reject it it doesn't glorify god it doesn't help me fulfill my assignment i decree and declare favor surrounds me if there is a garrison of favor men are coming to bless me today this is a king speaking you are impregnating your morning while others are sleeping you are speaking Shagato kaskariada. favor comes in the name of jesus no accidents no nothing I am immune to activities of witches. I am above. I come from above. While you are speaking, somebody is sleeping and laughing at you. By evening, they tell you the person is in the hospital. When he comes back home, he will never laugh at you again when you are speaking. That laughter 
is a is mockery mockery is initiated by a spirit when jesus wanted to raise the dead and he said the dead was sleeping people who were crying turned and started laughing they mocked him and said get out of the house go out get out of the house i want to raise the dead and when he was alone he said little girl talita kumi i say unto you arise are we together yeah when abraham had a conversation and he heard that god was speaking about a child sarah had it and laughed that laugh was sarcasm one of the proofs that somebody has a wicked spirit living in him is how sarcastic he is when believers make faith proclamations over their destiny you see someone while he's jumping his shoe has already caught and you laugh you see that kind of laughter is a spirit it's not just an act it's not just a negative disposition that's why when we say pray and speak and other people stand and they're wondering ah, ah, you mean this is how these people speak that's what that's what brought us here we acted like him Shabranda Kaskia, in the name of jesus people are blessed tonight the miracle service is a blessing koinonia is a blessing everything flourishes in this ministry because a word waters it words are powerful god rules the earth by the word of his power so you learn the speech of the kingdom you learn how to manifest faith but one of the things that you also learn are the systems of the kingdom i'm teaching you how to be like god let me teach you a deep mystery our time is gone i'll teach you this and then we'll just pray we'll continue next week have you been blessed god never does anything in the bible as a process twice read your bible god's system is to initiate things once and build a system around them for continuity believers hear me i want to teach you how to function like god that's why many businesses fail that's why many people cannot carry out the dominion mandate we'll discuss it next week when we talk of governance he says be fruitful then he says what multiply replenish subdue you can't do those things if you do not understand god's system so god initiates a process as a template then designs a system around it watch this god created man as our dispensation knows once and never had to create man again are we together he created man with the woman in him and then he brought the woman out and designed a system in them and says continue the result of that reproduction 7.2 billion people on the earth in spite of an average of eight people that die per second the earth is still growing because a man built a system systems are powerful are you hearing what i'm saying systems are what powerful when you do business by repeating the same thing you are not acting like god you create a product this is what many people have done google and all of that they don't know about you yet you carry their laptop because there is a system they made it once that's why coca-cola and the rest they have different branches around the world what did they program in those branches systems everybody says systems the greatest conglomerates in the world today operate through systems the same thing happening everywhere the catholics roman catholics i love them among other reasons because of the power and the dexterity of their systems systems maintain consistency it is how god functions god has not needed even when man fell when he was about to wipe the people in noah's days he still preserved the seed and out of those eight families new beginning he started another race systems jesus came as the firstborn of the begotten he died and nobody has had to die for his sins again a system of salvation whoever believes in him shall not perish are we blessed yes africans do not understand the systems of the kingdom so we do the same thing again and again do you know why god created things like videos systems so i don't have to preach the same message twice i preach it once and it is captured in a system and while i'm sleeping i am multiplying the influence to millions of people it's called systems don muen has never met with you yet you have been blessed by his ministry 
the anointing also obeys systems that's why everybody in every corner listening to don Wen's songs will feel the anointing think about it you are not a leader if you do not master building systems when i learned this principle it made my life easy look at how god built a system god himself transferred governance to man and programmed that man and handed the earth to him systems now man is mishandling the earth largely but it's a system the first crops that came out of the earth the bible says god himself planted i hope you know read your bible god planted trees systems and then in the tree he built systems what is another name for that system a seed this is how god operates a seed is not money a seed is a mystery that represents the system of continuity continuity in every man born of a woman there is a seed that represents potentials for continuity in every woman there is a womb that receives a seed as potentials for continuity so once there is a seed and there is a womb there is reproduction hear me once there is a seed and there is a womb there is what reproduction a seed without a womb cannot bring reproduction a womb without a seed cannot bring reproduction you need to find the wombs of there are many wombs on earth a woman's womb is only an adumbration of many other wombs the morning has a womb every day has a womb you can impregnate it with words and it will give birth in the daytime the pregnancy that happened in the night can be delivered for you in the daytime your mind is a womb information are the seeds when you plant informations in your mind like a woman gets pregnant over time it will deliver to you and change your life are we blessed god never does the same thing twice when you find out that you are trying to do the same thing as a leader the dominion mandate is not working in your life there must be a system of continuity let me tell you is one of the reasons why we never grow and never flourish how you know there is no system in your life is that your absence stops continuity when your absence stops continuity then there is no system so you are the ceo of the company you travel for two weeks you come back and meet hellfire there's no system nobody knows what to do no system if i'm not around for one year in koinonia it will still continue running the only thing that will be missed is my unique grace and anointing why systems mm. that's how pastors should train pastors you should be if 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 pastor alpha pastor femi and promise are all my pastors for instance if you hear pastor alpha you should not feel bad that i was not there that systems i have reproduced myself in him when you hear him you will miss me i love it every time i'm not around and people send me a text they say apostle we miss you but god koinonia was fire i said that's right systems but because of our inferiority and this village mindset that we have grown with every time you are not around and things don't work you are happy do you know why that's why many leaders do not mentor and train others because they think it is their way by exclusively capturing knowledge and keeping it how many people have died with secrets that can turn the lives of people how about anointings no if he carries the same anointing as i'm carrying will he ever respect me again look at god he didn't wait for you to be renewed he gave you the holy spirit straight up immediately after confession he granted you the holy spirit he didn't say change no he granted you the holy spirit to help you part of the ways that we rule and dominate is by building systems around things your prosperity is not something that is in the hands of god today your prosperity has been programmed in a system are you hearing what i'm saying god can in the systems are supervised so it's not like they are random 
there is still an individual supervising them the same way you put systems you can come and look at it and you can decide to influence it that's a sign that you are the owner of the system somebody can slaughter someone as a thief and go back home and get his wife pregnant that system will not stop because he's a wicked man now he'll go to hell if he doesn't repent but as far as that pregnancy is concerned an unbeliever who does not know God taps into God's system of wealth and abundance hallelujah I was telling the school of ministry students that there's something I'm going to teach them about finances that I've not touched and I've not taught any of the sets ah it's a revelation that God gave me that I mean if I teach you that and you don't prosper I don't know how to help you again I I don't know how to help you systems let me give you a little tip of the iceberg that being employed forever till retirement is a cause because in God's system you start under people but eventually the goal is for you to be established yourself so the spirit of servitude is such that you continue to serve a man if you not everybody will have platforms like churches businesses but even under those platforms there must allocate a place that allows your grace to function that is the spirit of god and is the program of god that's why he carved out earth and gave man but he gave man delegated authority that means it is exousia but it is still supervised so he can call man to order like pharaoh could still call joseph to order but pharaoh did not interrupt it is the system we run koinonia with that's why sometimes you never come and see me check ah, have the leaders fixed this flower well systems there are men of god you are preaching you are preparing salmon they just call you and say one wire has caught you bike by yourself to sabo and buy the wrong wire and bring it back before you finish you you forgot everything and then you are stressing yourself when you are doing everything by yourself it's a sign that you are not functioning like god let me show you why many of our parents are under stress they did not mentor the young people so they kept doing everything now the youngest person in the family is 31 yet is still father and mother that is providing food because they did not teach them how education does not teach you how it just enlightens your mind it is mentorship it is discipleship that teaches you how so a man of god starts a ministry and there are ordinary people and then you start teaching them how to prosper you show them the pathways to the anointing are we together you don't hide it there's nothing to hide these are the secrets you guide them you mentor them they receive measures of that anointing that is upon you you have built a system and then they begin to function the key to hardship is to not be able to reproduce yourself through systems you will pay the price and you will never last everything that has lasted and outlived the founders subscribe to function like god we're going to pray dominion the chaos in our society today is because we have not conformed to his image and his likeness his divine nature and his functionality you see why it's important to get people saved because that is the condition that can guarantee the potentials for dominion ye must be born again that's why we make altar calls that's why we're still going to make altar call tonight because there are people scattered inside outside who need Jesus now most preachers don't tell you why they just say come to Jesus there is a hellfire somewhere to burn the living daylight out of you and you run out of fear you are born again and you don't know what you ran from and to what dominion this is not just the issue of heaven it does not take so much to be assured of heaven because it's not something you do by yourself but when it has to do with your reigning listen the degree to which you have become like God in his image and his likeness is the degree to which you measure your success and your prosperity are you seeing why life cooperates with others life cooperates with God and everybody who functions like him life was designed to cooperate with God alone 
if you are not God life will not cooperate with you so our needless sufferings and pains is because we have fabricated methodologies by ourselves attempting to get God's result our way let hope let it rise darkness trembles in your own someone is rising beyond every shadow every shackle please rise up on your feet let hope rise darkness trembles in your holy light let hope let it rise tonight darkness trembles in listen i want you to look at your life carefully we're going to pray now you can trace every negative thing to your life to your inability to have conformed to the image or the likeness there are troubles and sicknesses that have come to us today high blood pressure because of worry when the peace and the joy of god is in you listen there is no drug that can give you peace there is no drug that can give you joy when you smoke cocaine and snuff all kinds of things they don't give you peace they attempt it you know why people try getting high and they take substance they are looking for peace they are looking for joy they are attempting to use things life was designed to respond to you once you are a possessor of the gift of righteousness and then abundance of grace that comes through knowledge through knowledge the bible says good understanding giveth favor but the way of the transgressor is hard could it be hear me that this is the missing link in your ministry could it be that this is the missing link in your business could it be that this is the missing link in your family why are things not working i'm always fighting with my wife i think i made a mistake i married a wrong woman it's a lie i think i and my children are stubborn there may be something you are fighting your children because you are trying to force them you are violating something about the dominion mandate you don't force people you give them a revelation you force your children to wear your, the clothes you want you force them to read the course you want every time you force men rebellion is inevitable that's why the children revolt but when you give them a revelation you see that God never forces us I set before you life and death I set before you blessing and cursing but here's my advice choose life why so that you can live in other words I want you to live and if you must live the key is choosing life not I force you to live that's what parents are doing and that's why children revolt when you resort back to giving them revelations look it looks like i'm hard on you but it's because i love you i've made mistakes in my own life and i want you to be a great gentleman i'm proud of you and i see potentials that gentleman by himself will start talking in well by himself will stop dressing like rags and remove all those things and start babbing well and not looking like a thief the gentleman will subscribe immediately because you gave them revelation but when you use force on people you are acting as the antichrist man was not mentioned in every element that was given that man should dominate man was not given there are pastors that dominate members and they never see they are anointed but people never like them they can walk into your house any day anytime cook for me fry chips for me i'm a man of god add this and that for me after all elijah told the shunammite elijah did not force her home. the woman had a right to refuse the trouble in the world is a negligence of the dominion mandate nobody was born rich nobody was born poor are we together people program themselves something in my life my life is hard creation is hostile to me in the garden of eden nothing fought adam nothing satan was still alive but adam was immune he only gave access lift your voice and pray and say lord what key do i need to apply to my life please pray pray 
why are things not working in my life he spoke and said let them have dominion why is my marriage not working why is my job not working why are doors closed over my life why do people hate me i'm anointed why is my church not growing why can't i experience the anointing of the holy spirit why am i poor and broke and begging at all times let hope rise darkness trembles in your own sing it one more time yeah. let hope rise tonight darkness trembles in your own let hope, let it rise tonight. Darkness rambles in your holy light. Shena malana malana mas, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. Hold on. Genesis, please give us something just came into my heart and I want to share. It was Genesis chapter 4. We are going to read verse 8. Let me show why you why our world is a wicked world. Because you see, every time people fail, instead of taking responsibility that I am violating the principles and the laws of dominion, usually we look for people to fight. The Bible says, and Cain this was after the sacrifice are we together now the sacrifice of abel was taken and the sacrifice of cain was rejected what was wrong violation of patterns violations of systems are we together now cain got angry cain can be your uncle cain can be your senior brother you see where enmity came from i am the senior brother in this family how can this younger one be successful that's what was happening there are men who fight their wives there are others who fight their younger ones there are people who hate themselves and the bible says it came to pass that when they were in the field that cain rose up against abel his brother and slew him what fruit of the spirit was missing no love no love no love are we seeing there now next verse and the lord said unto cain listen where is abel thy brother and he said i know not that's the liar there at work in him. The manifestation of Satan at work. Am I my brother's keeper? No kindness. No, he had become hardened and wicked. Verse 10. Listen. He says, and he said, what hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood cried unto me from the ground. Verse 11. He says and now thou art caused from the earth which had opened her mouth to receive thy blood oh dear i think i've lost myself the verse i'm looking for i think is the verse before verse 8 that says um cain was angry and god told him if you have done well will it not be accepted maybe it's, i'm sure it's the verses other verses in front we'll leave it because of time that's the scripture i was trying to look for that after cain met with god and was angry god told him come oh that why are you angry that i accepted your brother's sacrifice and rejected yours if you did it well will it not be accepted but if you do not do it well sin lieth at your door i think it's before yes it says give us verse six verse six we'll read six and seven and the lord said unto cain thank you this is the verse thank you media why art thou what angry god is speaking to you now emoji why are you angry at another man's church that the church is increasing and you are not increasing businessman why are you angry at another man's business why are you angry that uh, your sister is having her children well cultured he says and why is thy countenance falling that's frustration verse 7 if thou doest well according to patterns shall not die 
shall thou not be accepted then he says and if thou doest not well sin lieth at thy door see let me tell you every time you don't do well you will not get results and when you don't get the results anger frustration will come in that's why you hate successful people there are times that you see somebody with a nice car and just say thieves all these young pastors they are the ones who know how they are manipulating you see someone anointed and you begin to speak cynicism is a product of not obeying the dominion mandate was given to all men everybody say all men the ministry god called specific people into ministry but capacity to execute the dominion mandate legislature and governance reproduction fruitfulness the capacity to subdue was given to all men there's no need for jealousy exodus chapter 14 and verse 31 and israel saw the great work which the lord did upon the egyptians he says and the people feared the lord and believed the lord and also what his servant moses god performs mighty things and creates that track record not just so that he alone will be believed God also wants the vessel he's using to be believed. The Bible says they feared the Lord. They believed the Lord and they believed his servant. They believed the Lord and they believed his servant. You believe the Lord, you don't believe his servant, you may not get any miracle. Exodus chapter 19 and verse 9. Exodus chapter 19 and verse 9. And the Lord said unto Moses, Look up, please. Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with thee and believe thee forever. That means I can talk to you without the cloud, but I keep that cloud as that evidence so that the people can trust that it is me you are talking to. I'm, I'm going that far because I don't just want the people to believe me alone. I want them to believe you too because their receiving is dependent on their, both their believing me, God, and their believing you, his servant. He says, and the Lord said, I come in a thick cloud. So sometimes when God does some of these signs and wonders, it's, it's not really just for him alone. When God does some of these things, oh, there's a lady here and someone is shouting. Another, you know what God is doing? He's using those things. It's, it's a similitude of the cloud to help you see. You can call somebody and say, who is grace or who is um, victory? And you can say, this is just guessing. I'm sure it's just guessing. But how do you guess that someone in this direction do you guess that one? God does some of these things sometimes purposely to just address the, the leftover of unbelief. Because you see, some of us are coming from different Christian experiences. Some of us have been, our minds have been messed up by all kinds of theology, all kinds of philosophies. Some of us have had bad experiences with all kinds of men of God, prophets and whatever. And chances are that when you come like this, usually you will just add the man of God to the list of all the people and hope that he's just a better version of them. And God says not so. And he uses these signs to speak to you that you are in Mount Zion. Are we together? It's amazing how a little miracle can just readjust your unbelief immediately. Readjust your unbelief while the devil is trying to lie to you. Can your life be changed all of a sudden? The, the power will touch the person near you. This somebody you shook hands with, turn to your neighbor and say this and that. So you know that the person, uh, the person can't be acting. It's a very difficult thing for believers to believe God. But I think it's even harder to believe a man of God. And people have all kinds of justifications as to why they shouldn't believe men of God. 
But regardless of what your justifications are, if you believe God and don't believe the vessel, you will be established, but you will not prosper. Are we together? Your prosperity is what gives evidence to your establishment. You must believe. One word from God can turn your life around. One prophetic word can turn your life around. All these strange spirits that oppress people, they don't just go because they are told to go. No. It takes the anointing. I was talking with one of the protocol uh, people when we were coming down here and I told him, I was shaking my head and then I was talking to him and I said, I am amazed driving down to come for the miracle service now. I said, I am amazed at how people in Africa and Nigeria trivialize success. I am shocked at how people um, believe that success is about luck. It's amazing how people can see a huge sacrifice and trivialize it and just make it look like, I think these people are just fortunate. Is that true? I, I, these were my contemplations while I was coming. Listen, there's no result that happens in this kingdom by mistake now including the testimony you are about to have that gentleman from ghana he did not just press this thing and found my name no 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 the anointing that is sent with that word works day or night are we together now there are many testimonies just like his that gentleman you see that now someone will tell you i was sitting and i had a dream how about those who buy new phones brand new phones brand new phones and then they open it and see koinonia messages inside how do you explain that a new phone not new uh, what they call that thing not new memory card i'm not talking about new memory card a new phone that you bought it tear rubber you are the one who opened it then the first thing you see inside is a message that answers your question who, who now who, how do you explain that listen listen we live in a world that is not natural it only manifests the spiritual naturally the 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 the, the earlier you got this the better my brothers and my sisters hear me all that you see in this world is only a reflection say reflection the real control room in this our world is the realm of the spirit whoever can ascend this three-dimensional realm has the advantage of victory nothing happens that is physical are we together one of the reasons why many of us are seated here tonight among the many miracles we desire is finance oh nigerians finance you want to talk a good news to any honest nigerian right now in this day and age as we transit into the ember month no matter speak about their spiritual life yes speak about their love for god passion new depths but please don't ignore that other one just even if it's in passing just say something about it finance many people want to see financial breakthrough many people are working and they are trusting god for breakthrough and remember the strange thing about finance do you know why listen i'm not talking about money we're going to pray shortly do you know why many believers are poor because in the kingdom finance is warfare money is not just an instrument to live well it's a weapon see listen oh dear what's it ecclesiastes 7 let me just talk a little you was uh i i didn't plan to say this but ecclesiastes 7 verse 12 let me show you something May God give somebody deliverance right now. Read it, read it. One to read. For wisdom is a defense. Uh-huh. And money is a defense. Just stop there. So we know from the word that both wisdom and money is a defense. Now look up. When the Bible says you have a weapon, what is a weapon? Something you use to both defend yourself and you can use also for attack. Is that true? If you give me a weapon like a shield, I use it for defense and the Bible says one of the many weapons 
money is one of them and the bible says those weapons are not carnal the word not carnal means they are not man-made but my brother my sister this thing is man-made it was made by cbn that means this is not what god is talking about because this is man-made but the bible says this weapon that he calls money is not carnal he said it is mighty through god that means there is a spirit are you getting what i'm saying that means this thing is only the body the same way human being is called currency anything that moves is a living thing and that means there is a spirit inside the body to move it you are only seeing the body where is the spirit that moves it that's why it can enter a house you didn't ask it to go and it will go out by itself it can enter your account and still go out because it's warfare the bible says, believe is prophet there is something they can do that can do something to the many things including this this is what we chase all around because we think this is paper no this is not this is paper yes but there is a spirit behind it and this thing respects that spirit this is what you need to understand so the spirit can instruct it to leave you and it can leave no matter how hard working you are you can receive salary and all you have is part of this left and it can be instructed to leave you it will, you know it's going it's going out of your life it just touches your hand and disappears because the weapons prosperity is warfare it's not just about money to buy car and houses money is a defense it can defend the gospel it can defend a man and the bible says all those weapons they are not carnal so if you ever see this looking for anybody naira does not look for men something makes it come i please are you getting what i'm saying if you can understand this alone at least even if you don't know how it comes you already know that it doesn't come by itself these are the mysteries that surround our kingdom you ever see anybody prosperous in the kingdom my brothers and my sisters listen to me this is a spiritual realm you don't have to be a christian to believe it you just have to be alive this is a spiritual realm animals know it plants know it's a spiritual realm that's why you throw a seed in the ground and you cover it you don't leave it open you cover it because what happens there is none of your business now you just cover it and watch it happen and it grows to become a tree that you cannot push down a little seed when you planted it it had no roots the bible says just like you do not know the way of the wind nor how a woman how a child is formed in the womb of her that is with child you know and all of that so also you don't know the way of god the lord brought you here tonight because there are spiritual possibilities listen that are beyond the realm of the eyes are we together most times we believe only what we can see and understand and explain unfortunately in this kingdom there are things that you may not be able to explain when people come here to testify you see me sit quietly and i watch and many times i'm in shock as i watch the immutability of god's power in the lives of people the same way you are going to come up here to testify yes it's true what suddenly happens to you and then you have someone just call you and say we're sending you to us to get a job Hapa, my brothers and my sisters i've told you again and again that everybody who helps you has relatives too who i need whatever makes you to leave them and come to you is not normal
that you are sitting and someone says i'm thinking of you who do you think you are no i want to help you i want to bless you you step into prepared blessings blessings that you are as sure he said master we have toiled all night and jesus looked at them you know how to fish by waiting in the night and allowing the fish to come and rest on your net then you quickly pull it in the morning that's how you were trained but let me show you another technology cast your net to the right side master but we only have left and right <clears throat> this one is not brain work now this one is not one plus one i told you one plus one plus god is equal to whatever he says the answer should be one plus one is two but one plus one plus God is not equal to two. It's not even equal to 10,000. It's equal to any answer that God puts there. So one plus one can be equal infinity. God said so. Are we together now? I'm saying this to build your faith tonight so that you will believe that God is able to do anything at all when you look at the way you got to hear about this ministry and the various ways the holy spirit worked with you till you came today you should know already that there is a god in heaven are we together now brothers and sisters i present to you this same god who can change your life who will change your life i'm saying this so that you don't just sit down and be clapping for others wow this is how god has changed this lady's life wow we are soon going to pray you must have a desperation and say lord i didn't come tonight to clap for anybody i left my journey wherever lord i know that you will visit me and i hold on to the horns of the altar while you are sitting the devil is telling you remember tomorrow by 12 your rent or embarrassment say satan go away and before the presence of god tomorrow is too far god can how many minutes does it take to do a transfer I believe him yes i do i believe him i believe him i believe him i believe he can change my life in one minute i want you to just mention everything you are trusting god to do tonight go ahead lord i believe you for this i believe you for that Those outside, whether you are standing by the wall, whether you are standing in any of the overflows, and those following online, release your faith. Don't be distracted. Any spirit that distracts you in this moment now is of the devil. It's a Luciferian spirit. Let your spirit and let your attention be open. Yes, Lord, I believe you. Mention it. Don't say it's too big. That's the devil. Too big compared to what? Pray, believers. Lord, I know you are able. You are able to take away this reproach from this family. Talk to Jesus. Even if you find yourself crying, just continue to speak. Lord, you are able. Change this situation. Turn my academics around. Lord, turn my finances around. Lord, I'm in a situation right now where only you, the God of heaven, can arise. Turn my ministry around. Lord, I'm confused. I don't even know where to go right now. I don't know whether to go to the left or to the right, but I receive grace. Pray. Are you praying? Kill unbelief as you are praying. Don't let the devil tell you you are wasting your time. God of heaven. It says, be anxious for nothing. 
but in everything by prayer and by supplication with thanksgiving it says make your request known don't assume it is known make your request known lord i'm here tonight because i want you to turn the situation of my family around lord there is a death sentence over my family and you have to arise for me tonight lord there is a death sentence over my life lord i've been delayed 10 years of my life i am backward 10 years there has to be a way you restore me oh god Lord, I'm trusting you for the fruit of the womb. The gentleman who came here, seven children lost, including twins. Lord, I'm trusting you to refire my spiritual life. Something has happened to the anointing upon my life something has happened to the glory upon my destiny i'm here tonight oh god turn my life around turn my life around something has happened the signs and wonders are no more like before the revelation and the grace and the utterance is not like before i'm here for a turn around oh god my prayer life has died i'm here for a reawakening i no longer fast i no longer pray I don't know what has happened to me. I cry for help. Hallelujah. One more prayer point. Lord, I believe you and I believe your servant. I believe that anointing and I believe in its ability to turn my life around. Walk on any unbelief in my heart, oh God, and take it out tonight. Go ahead and pray. Every spirit of doubt, every spirit of fear. Isaiah 61 please participate in everything we are doing it's going to be a very fast one but let your spirit be open the spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord the same Lord that you are instructed to believe hath anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek he hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted now listen this is why he anointed me because there is an agenda but that that agenda cannot be achieved just by a well-meaning heart it takes more than sincerity to bind up a broken heart to proclaim liberty now i like this one to proclaim to declare that the time has come for you to walk free it says and the opening of prison my brothers and my sisters there can be men physically walking but they are in prison next verse Verse 2, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all those who mourn. It takes more than a handkerchief to comfort men. It takes the anointing. Verse 3, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. Now this is the part I like, to give them beauty for ashes. The oil of joy 
for mourning. Hallelujah. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that they might be called trees or oaks of righteousness. The planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. So the end of it is for God to be glorified but not in the current state. No. So anything in your family make sure you carry your family along in this miracle service don't just stand alone to receive i've told you if you are blessed and your family members are not blessed you are not free you are not free at all if you are the only one who is alive and everybody is just dying like a chicken you are still not free are we together now thank you jesus christ let me give us one last prayer point father every desire i brought here tonight I'm not walking back with it. Lift your voice and pray. Every. Let your faith rise as you pray. Shalakata barakato. Talato shabraha sikete malakata. Shakata kata barakata barateke barakos. Every desire. Visit me, O oh God, completely. The God who touches my spiritual life can touch my finances too. The God who touches my body can touch my womb too. Lord, I insist. I insist for completeness. comes upon your life right now then the Lord okay I want to pray a prayer now please be your brother's keeper whether you are inside or outside is because of what will happen when I pray the anointing will come and people will act out what I'm saying physically that's why I'm saying you should you should just hold them are we together now the Lord is asking me to release speed. Listen, speed is a very powerful thing. When that anointing comes, you will start running like Elijah. That's why I'm saying, hold them. Right now, I stretch my hands inside, outside, online, and I declare, Spirit of the living God, there are men and women here who have been delayed, and speed must come upon them. Right now, I declare at the count of three, one, two, three, receive that grace. I command speed, speed right now, speed, let the hand of God come upon you. The Bible says the hand of the Lord was upon Elijah and he ran on barefoot and overtook the chariots of Ahab down to Israel. 
I command speed, receive it. It's coming on you now. Some of you is coming on you for the sake of your family. It's not just you alone. It's coming on you for the sake of your family. Let the chains be broken. I release speed. Speed. In one month. In one month. I'm prophesying that in one month, what has not been done in five years, in one month, receive that grace. I energize your spirit, man. Speed. When speed comes upon a family, you will see it in the result. When speed comes upon your spiritual life, when speed comes upon your academics, I'm praying again. The angels that ride upon the chariots are bringing you speed. I release that grace. Let that anointing come upon you. Speed. Speed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Speed. Shalakato sadakata. Sheketo kata shalakato ziata. now now listen fire in the spirit has many significance fire this fire is a mystery it was a reality borrowed from the realm of the spirit that we use here fire does not run away from any element fire is the only thing that all other elements must fit whether you put metal the metal will be hot wood will be burnt rubber will be melted there is nothing that stands fire other things can stand water but not fire are we together now he said he shall baptize you with the holy ghost and with fire when the holy spirit listen is moving to break chains he moves as fire do you know why because fire destroys every other thing yet it is not destroyed it is not solid it is not liquid are we together it looks like gas but it's there you are seeing it you can't hold it you can't cage fire you can't lock it up it's not restrained by anything the holy ghost is going to move right now in this place as fire listen this fire i want you to bring those people out this fire you see will bring an end now believe me when i tell you this will bring an end to many captivities many captivities at the count of three i just want you to shout with me that word fire that word fire and many of you will be surprised in the name of jesus where sam there's a song in my spirit when we sing that song what's the name of that song blow 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 like a mighty wind am i correct you know what i'm talking about so you sing that song by the time we pray in the name of Jesus I'm stretching my hands right now Spirit of the Lord you seek to reveal yourself as fire that consuming fire no power and no spirit evil spirits can be burnt by fire in the name of Jesus I declare that any operation that is not of God at the count of three by the mystery of the Holy Ghost as fire let there be deliverance let there be refining let there be the breaking of chains are you ready now one two three bring them out fire the mystery of fire
I declare any chain if there is anyone under the sound of my voice and any chain has held your destiny by the mystery of this fire I'm speaking by this apostolic and prophetic grace I decree and declare to the heavens at the count of three may that fire locate chains in this place now one two three chains be broken chains be broken chains be broken spirit of victory cover us with your wings Madam, please clear the way for me. These women, tap these women for me. One, two, and the other person, three. Please come. Mama, I'm going to pray for you. You are welcome. Your first time here? I came here last week. Okay, you were here last week and you too. Um, is this the is this the mama I asked to come? I think it's someone else I saw, but when you are here, we'll honor you. But I want to pray for you. Madam, look at me. I'm seeing witchcraft in your life and your family. Where are you coming from? Where are you coming from? You are coming from Abuja. I want to pray for you. Hold my hands, man. Look at me. I know you believe in the power of God. Shout Jesus as loud as you can. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bring to end every oppression of darkness. Mama, I decree and declare, in one month, your life will turn around it to surprise you. In one month. In the name of Jesus Christ. Where is that man that came from my Duguri? The one who came to give a testimony. Mama, let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is saying I should tell you that the oppression is over. Look, I'm seeing fire. He's leaving my hands and is coming upon you in the name of Jesus Christ please where is that man we have to hurry up there's, there's a lot to do in the name of Jesus Christ mama I decree and declare over your life that fire the Lord it looks like you are an elderly woman but the Lord is going to use you mightily. What you are receiving now is not just a miracle yet. You are receiving an impartation. You will begin to know the Holy Spirit in a very intimate way. Hold my hand. Spirit of the living God, you seek to use this dear mother. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will know the Holy Spirit in supernatural ways. His fire will come upon your life and he will use you in a very mighty way. In the name of Jesus, come. You are the man that came from my degree. What is this? CV and your CV. You are trusting God for a job. And who is this? Hold it. Do you believe that if I pray for you, you are returning with a job? You believe that? Hold my hands. In the name of Jesus, I release the anointing upon you and I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, let there be that miracle. You go and return with your job, sir. Let me pray for you, man. In the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands upon you and I declare that the oppression of darkness comes to an end. A complete end over your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. We are going to pray right now, but let me just... Um, the Lord is showing me, okay. 
sometimes this time, time, time just affects you. But I'm praying right now and I'm seeing letters and I'm seeing on the letter congratulations. Listen, and I'm seeing that this is a symbolism of breakthrough. Listen, let me tell you, except God is not God. If this anointing that I'm seeing touches you, then you and your family must stand here and testify. I'm stretching my hands right now. Lord, you are showing me this. In the name of Jesus, this is a symbol of breakthrough. I stretch my hands. Every family and every person that must receive of this grace, I'm stretching my hands now. You must testify. I release upon you that grace. You must testify. I declare whatever it will translate to, whether a job, whether increase, whether promotion, I command it, I declare it, I decree it. In the name of Jesus, I command it, I decree it, I declare it right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. hold the hands of this lady this one hold the hands of this lady in the name of Jesus Christ I stretch my hands right now and I declare it's time for your family to rise I'm speaking it by the spirit of prophecy and I decree and declare every embargo that holds on to that family I command that is gone now in the name of Jesus it is gone I curse the power of witchcraft in the name of Jesus Christ. Stretch your hands towards me. Your hand is a symbol of your productivity. And there are many of you, there is no grace on the works of your hands. I look and in the spirit, I don't see the blessing of the Lord working. That's what is responsible for hardship. It's not like you are not employed or you are not doing this, but in the name of Jesus, I stand representing the Spirit of God and I stretch my hands back to you. I'm declaring still that ministry of fire. Many of you will be surprised. Whatever it is you are involved in, God is about to bring grace upon it. I stretch my hands right now at the count of three. May the fire of God come through your hands into your life. Lord, I pray. In the name of Jesus, whatever has not been working in your life, I force it to work right now. Receive that anointing. I force it to work now. Inside, outside, I force it to work now. Those following online, I pray and I speak whatever it is that you are doing. I declare the blessing. I activate the blessing upon the work of your hand. I take away hardship from your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I take away hardship from your life in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is opening the eyes of people into where your blessing is. I'm seeing fire, still this fire thing coming on the eyes of people physically you will feel fire burning and ideas the lord is birthing things is is a birthing in the spirit i release that grace right now in the name of jesus lord all those who must see show them oh god where their blessings are stationed so that they stop dilly-dallying around life i decree and declare receive that grace the grace of an open eye the grace of an open vision May the Lord show you where the resources of your destiny is. May the Lord show you where your helpers are. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. This, the prayer is for everybody, eh? But this particular prayer now is for ladies. The Lord is showing me destinies that must be changed. Outwardly, you are beautiful, you are good looking, you are virtuous, you are wonderful. But in the realm of the spirit, it's not what we are seeing physically that we are seeing in, this, in the realm of the spirit. A man with an ugly situation sat down at a gate called beautiful. The gate was beautiful, but the man's life was nonsense. There are many people you can stand. I'm, I'm saying everybody, but this is ex specifically for our sisters. And it's not just the issue of marriage. I'm not talking about marriage alone. That there is a fragrance, a presence that can ooze from you and bring favor to your life. But many of you physically, they look at you and you look like you are beautiful, you are this, you are that. But in the realm of the spirit, there are powers sitting on people's destiny. In the name of Jesus, lift your hands. I want to pray for you. That, that force, that veil must be torn. In the name of Jesus, ah, I'm seeing a strange grace that is coming on many people, especially our sisters. I declare any wrong identity that you are given in the realm of the spirit that is not a reflection of your true identity, any exchange that has been made in the realm of the spirit so that physically you should be blessed, but in the realm of the spirit you are carrying another person's destiny. Right now, by the fire of the Holy Ghost, sisters, may that anointing come upon you now. May that grace come upon you now. I declare anyone's destiny here that has been changed and switched and manipulated in the realm of the spirit so that what you look like is not a reflection of what your destiny is. I change it now in the name of Jesus. I change it now in the name of Jesus. Listen. A man's destiny can be exchanged. It's true. Have you not read in the Bible where kings slaughtered their children to prolong their own lives a man's destiny can be a shadow of something else you know you are alive but this is not your life you know that you are living another person's script i'm saying it again in the name that is above all names sir come I don't know you, but I want to pray for you, sir. God is going to turn your life around. And you see this prayer that I'm saying generally, this prayer, sir, is for you. You are a shadow of your life. Of your Is your dad? Where did he come from? From high there. From where? High there. From high there. Daddy, I'm going to pray for you. This is not just about your leg. Huh? This is about your destiny. I want to pray for you. Hold my hands, sir. Father... In the name of Jesus Christ, I declare Shalos Kapra Hasegete Barandos Kabria Shata Ente Skalabra Hafas Kadabarakoto Supriata Kataj Mande Kres Koda Hashabari Katos Kada Natos Kada Natos Kada Mashada Kata Empre Kete Koto Koto Bat Sada Balakata Shapres Kete 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 Balakata Shapriata Kata In the name of Jesus, anyone who has exchanged your destiny, sir. I decree and declare a restoration now. You are the daughter, hold my hands. I pray for you. Look at me. You are a wonderful lady, huh? But bad things continue to happen in your life. Huh? You are a nice lady. Are you married? I'm married already. Don't worry. I know why I'm saying. You get what I'm saying now. Yes, sir. Because what I'm seeing, this is a spirit. 
You are a nice lady, but people continue to misunderstand you. Yes, sir. Yes, Good sir. things, and people look at you. In the eye of many people now, you are, you are a devil, you are a terrible lady, yes, but it's sir. not true. Yes, you have a very beautiful heart. This is what happens when... Do you know that there are spirits that make sure you are misrepresented in the eyes of people? A ministry can be under this captivity. No matter... The Bible said, don't let your good be evil spoken of. You can be nice to somebody like it's happening to many of you and people end up fighting you. You bought something for them and they end up, you are saying, what is this? I pray for you and the person says, so you are trying to say I'm the one who is not spiritual. It's a spirit. My dear, I want to pray for you. Eh? This thing is not just about your marriage that is, you know, things have gone wrong. You are a wonderful lady. Huh? favor will come close to you but then never enter your life yes, sir. what yes, do you sir. do I'm working in a security uh, you are a security yes, sir. did you go to school yes sir I'm running my masters you are running your masters yes, sir. my dear do you believe God can change your life yes, now sir. I believe sir hold my hands to appoint unto them. You see that? To appoint. This one is a prophet's reward. It's not just that God is saying do this. There is something in the spirit called a prophet's reward. The possibilities that accompany an office, I declare in the name of the God of heaven whom I represent, may your life change this night in a way that will surprise you. Listen. I lift you from this security work you are doing and I put you in a position that befits your destiny. In the name of Jesus Christ. Daddy, sir, I'm praying for your daughter in your presence. This lady will come here and give a testimony that even you as a father will say this one is the Lord's doing. Are we together now? I declare it, I decree it done right now. Hear me. I don't care whether you are working or not. If you are not in the rightful place as ordained by God, I want to pray a very serious prayer because there are people, the work you are doing is a nonsense work. That work is, it has robbed your spiritual life. It has destroyed your relationship. Because of that work, no man can see you to marry you. Demonic work that closes you everywhere. I decree and declare, I stand by this apostolic and prophetic grace. If you are in a place that is not your assigned place of destiny. I take you out of that place and I shift you to the place of destiny. I shift you. I shift you in the spirit. I shift you by prophecy. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen. If the widow of Zarephath was not where the prophet met her, that's how her miracle would have gone. It matters that you are in the right place at the time God sends your miracle. Some of these things in the name of employment, they are traps of the devil. I'm not saying it's not good to work, don't get me wrong. But many of them are traps from the peace of hell. There are people whose spiritual lives have gone down from heaven to earth. Simply in the name of job. Are we together? Nonsense job. That on Sunday you're on your way going to church. Your boss calls you. And says you must come and resume. What shall it profit a man? If you gain the... What is it? Is that the whole world? How much is the salary? Lose your soul for peanuts. I declare again. In the name of Jesus. May my God relocate someone here. By the power of the Holy Spirit. May my God relocate a destiny, relocate a family. If you are not in your assigned place, I shift you tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Do you know, listen, we are going to pray for the sick shortly. There are people that if the devil wants to destroy them, he will make sure they get visa. Ah, Pastor Jay, it's good to see you. There are people that the devil wants to destroy them. They will get visa to UK. They think it's breakthrough, but they have gone away from their place of destiny. God spoke to Jonah. Go to Nineveh. Jonah entered a boat 
on his way to Tarsus. And because of that wrong journey, people lost their properties. People lost. He entered a boat and made people to start destroying their lives. They were almost dying because a man was not in sync with seasons. Let me tell you this. It matters that God meets you at the place where your blessing is waiting for you. The devil can relocate people and, and destroy your life. There are many Nigerians outside this country whose destiny is ordained by God to be in this country. You see them roaming around like armed robbers around the world in the name of abroad. And there are others whose destinies are abroad and the devil will make sure that he will peg them somewhere. And Isaac sowed in that land. It's not just that he sowed. The place he sowed matters. Isaac sowed in that land. Abraham, take now thy son and go. Go to a location. That's where I will meet with you. God is everywhere. But destiny does not meet with men everywhere. You must have the discernment to understand your season of visitation. I repeat this. You see me speaking like this. I'm speaking by the Spirit. There are some of you, it's an instruction from God to you. Don't be careless about your life. Look at how many Nigerians, you go to embassies and see Nigerians, they want to go abroad by fire, by force. Ask them why. They will say greener pastures. I've told you, greener pastures is not in any physical location on earth. Greener pastures is in the world. When I sent thee, lackest thou anything? Not when you went. Jesus instructed them and said, do not go. Go only to the lost tribe of Israel. Don't go outside that camp. Because salvation was for the Jews first. If they went to the Gentiles, they would have received a root shock. Direction. Direction. Please, in one minute before we pray for the sick, lift your voice and say, Lord, direct me. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. Direct me. There is a way that cement right unto a man, unto a woman, unto a family. Direction. Your blessing is not just generically in US or UK. There are people suffering in every nation. It takes the leadership of the spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, two things we are going to do very quickly. And I know you have been doing this, but please, I want to plead with you to do it with understanding. Most times we do things in this kingdom without understanding. That's why we are not blessed. Are we together? We are going to pray for the sick now. Don't walk out here if you expect to walk back the same way. Come here convincing, knowing that God is going to touch you. And while we are doing that, um, your prayer, if you don't have your prayer request, please write it quickly. Write it quickly. And in case your faith, you came here with a faith that is weak, you did write some vital things, you can add it quickly. Those online, you can send it. You can send your prayer request very quickly. Now, we are going to do this very fast because our time is gone. Thank God Pastor Jax is here. Are we together? Now, overflow. Listen, let's not be rowdy. Overflow one outside will walk to your projector stand. Overflow two, you also walk to your projector stand. Overflow three, walk to your projector stand those who are in here you are trusting god to touch you to touch your family members you can make your way and come and stand orderly in front here now please quickly quickly let's do that very quickly while we are doing that please if you have written your prayer request i want you to wave it and ushers you may find a way of splitting yourself very quickly let's let's have ushers if the ushers are not in your pr department you can join them and then let's make it very fast. Make sure everyone's request 
um, is obtained, please, for those online, I want you to believe by faith. If you are still here to write, just write it. Ushers, please. There are hands all around. Let's help out. Protocol can also help so that we'll make sure that everyone's request. If it's a text on your phone and you don't have the opportunity to write it down while I'm praying, you can just connect with it. It's not just a ritual. Believe in what we're doing. the name of Jesus we stand by this corporate grace and this corporate anointing Pastor Jax Ejimi there um, Pastor Alpha Benga Overflow 1 Pastor Femi Promise Overflow 2 please quickly quickly let's go there and let's trust God to touch the people God has anointed this ministry and he has given us the grace to be the extension of the hand of Jesus over your life. And I want you to agree. I want you to believe. The worship team will lead us in a moment of praise and worship while we pray. And please listen. Except the people are prophesying to you or they are talking to you. Just a touch. I want you to believe by faith. Are we together? You don't have to start giving them an explanation. This is why I'm here. Don't worry. Just connect by faith. If there is a word for you, the word will be given to you. Otherwise, just believe by faith. Father, we thank you. You call this place Koinonia and this meeting a miracle service. Lord, we pray for those online and those within. We decree and declare. Let there be a free flow of the power of the Holy Spirit. Let the sick be healed. Let the oppressed be delivered. Lord, let this touch not just be the touch of men. Let it be the touch of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, let every one of these people come and testify here. In the name of Jesus. Now, those of you who, when you submit your prayer request, don't just be staring. This is not a cinema. You should be praying. Are we together? Because shortly after this, I will pray on this and I will speak over our lives. Prophecy is very powerful. So whilst you are standing there, whether you are, you know, up here or down, you should be prayerful, spiritualize your mentality. Now is not the time to laugh around and be talking carelessly. Let your spirit be alive. Hallelujah. God bless you. Be healed right now in Jesus' name. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Be healed right now.
heaven is lifting, shackles are breaking, heaven touches earth in this place. Hallelujah, hallelujah, that's what my 
Stretch your hands while praying on this request. Shala bakaruta sabre dike dike tabala daba. Nataka parakato shada bre dike de bele debos. Father, let your people return with testimonies. Ha shala gata brada gata parakato sada bre dike de. In the cross asia saha sabara kato shabre dike de bala daba. Rakata branda gata bala debos. E pratos kada brandi ke Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, let impossible situations be turned around by the Spirit of God. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. Lord, it is before you these prayers are laid out. Father, we give you praise. Thank you because whatsoever we ask in your name, that you will do. Thank you for prayers. Thank you for answers. Thank you for praises. Thank you for testimonies that abounds. Father, we give you praise for there is nothing impossible with you. We give you glory because we know situations that have stood hitherto. 
unbeatable lord you will bend things tonight in the name of jesus Amen. you will change things tonight in the name of jesus you will bring breakthroughs by the power of your spirit Amen. you bring healings you bring deliverance you will bring breakthrough financial breakthroughs in the name of jesus you bring changes lord death supernatural deaths we cancel by the power of your spirit lord we give you praise we give you glory Father, we thank you. Thank you for angels, the release of angels. Angels on assignment. Angels bringing solutions and answers to prayers. Father, we give you praise because many will stand before you to give testimony and give glory to your name. For in the name of Jesus, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It has been declared in the name of Jesus every request here. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, we turn it into testimonies. Yeah. And let some of them begin to manifest from this night. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Let it be by the grace of God that by this time next month, you will, you will almost not have any request to write. In the name of Jesus Christ. Our time is gone, but I want you to lift your hands. I want to speak over your life now. Apostle, why do we do this all the time? Because this is how you program the destinies of people. These words you see, they are not just languages. It's not just the speaking. You know, I never cease to be amazed at how people's lives change overnight just because a word the bible says he sent a word to jacob not he spoke he sent a word to jacob and it lighted upon israel hallelujah and he blessed them saying and he blessed them not thinking saying in the name of jesus i decree and i declare that this month of September you are entering, let it be called your season of strange results. Let it be called your season of strange results. Anyone who has despised the grace of God upon your life, in the name of Jesus, may God use your life to prove a point. I decree and declare over your spiritual life a new vista of insight and access into the mysteries of the spirit I release it upon you right now if you are a man of God here I pray may your ministry shift to a new dimension if you are a woman of God here I pray may your ministry enter a new dimension of power I declare that someone here may you encounter the power of God raw, the raw power of God the same way God comes to man may his power come to you may you know the mysteries of the power of God in the name of Jesus Christ I speak over your life this is a family of great favor I declare if this grace is not yet speaking in your life i declare by the hand of god almighty who brought that anointing upon my life and this house may favor practical favor begin to follow you from today in the name of jesus christ what you cannot do for yourself i ask my god to do it for you in this season If you're a man of God here, I prophesy to you that the next time you stand upon this altar to dispense the word of God, may you see a dimension of the spirit through your life and your ministry that will surprise you. I know that there are many of us that are trusting God for all kinds of financial breakthrough. I've taught you the principles of finances, but there is a prophetic dimension of wealth. Are we together now? And in the name of Jesus, I declare the same grace that carried a raven and it brought bread to Elijah 
I decree and declare may that same grace carry your blessings and locate you with it in this season. In the name of Jesus, I pray for every family represented here. In the name of Jesus, and I say this from the depth of my heart, enough is enough. I prophesy it again, enough is enough. Whatever represents setbacks in any family, I stand by the anointing of the Holy Spirit and I command that an end comes to it this night. Every graduate here that is trusting God for a job, you heard the testimony here, in the name of Jesus Christ, both where you applied and where you didn't apply, may the angel of the Lord see to it that a miracle job locates you. Those who are in business here, in the name of Jesus, business is spiritual, the grace that will cause your business to command strange results. May that grace come upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. If there is anyone here in any kind of trouble that needs the hand of God, that means if God does not step in for you, you know you are in trouble. I stand by the gift of prophecy and I decree and declare over your life, come out of that trouble now. Whether it's a financial trouble, whether it's whatever, come out of it now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every attack on your destiny, I decree and declare from tonight, by the assignment of angels, we ward off that attack in Jesus' name. Whoever has been destined by God to help you rise, and either because of witchcraft or insensitivity in the spirit, he has not been able to locate you. In the name of Jesus, I declare, I call them by the spirit and I command that they locate you. <laughs> Believe in every prayer that we're praying. We're entering the ember months and many people associate this month with all kinds of demonic activity, minus you. <laughs> I say it again, minus you. Everyone who is part of this prophetic family and connected to this family, I declare the mystery of exemption over you. In the name of Jesus Christ. That when men say there is a casting down, I welcome you into the greatest months that you have to face for this year. I decree and I declare over your life we're rounding up there are some of you nothing ever works in your life it's not like you are lazy it just doesn't work except it fails you to the point that even when you see success you are afraid of it because you know it will not last I declare not only will you be successful I command your results to last I say it again by the Spirit I command your results to last. I forbid you from this experience of up today and down tomorrow in the name of Jesus Christ. Any door that was once open and is now closed, I reopen it in Jesus' name. I hope you believe everything I'm saying. Please believe it with all your heart. I pray for every student here. I don't know what challenge you may be having. Or I don't know what you are trusting God for. In the name of Jesus, I pray particularly for students that are supposed to have graduated and one thing or the other is keeping them. I don't care what needs to be done. Let it be done to move you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I say it again. Let it be done to move you. There are some of our young ones that just wrote post UME. In the name of Jesus, there are some of you who the results you have seen now, 
from that result you will not get anything serious i change that result now i change that result now i change that result now believe it you are too young to walk in unbelief i change that result now anyone assigned here program that you must die or that your loved ones as we enter this ember whether by accident as you are moving listen no i know our time is gone but i'm praying a very important prayer believers are careless and that's why sometimes we allow the devil to take advantage of us i declare whether by air or by land whether on bike kekena pep if it will crash you will never enter it I say it again, if that fake cool is doomed for accident, then I take you out of it. But in the name of Jesus, if you enter it, then it must not crash. I pray for your finances again that in the name of Jesus, the worship team sang here and said, Ebenezer, there is a God that can help men. I pray for you directly finance. That's the prayer I'm praying for you now. I know you love God already. I'm not doubting your passion for God, but the resources that it will take, especially for you, my dear brothers, it takes a lot for a young man to be established. And it's not a blessing if you are just going old and old and old and you have to beg for tea and bread every day. In the name of Jesus, the grace that helps men that can take a man from nowhere and establish him because you have believed the Lord, I command your establishment now. He said, keep us, lead us not into temptation and deliver us from evil. I pray for you. Any orchestration of evil, a trap of Satan, so that you will enter and it will destroy your life. Quarter to getting into that trap. I declare in the name of Jesus, may the Lord rescue you out of it. Two or three more prayers and we're done. Any friend in your life, any useless association in your life that is not profiting you spiritually, destiny-wise, financially, I caught it from the realm of the spirit this night. I ate it out of your life in the name of Jesus. Let me tell you, there is a saying, show me your friends and I will show you your destiny. Some of us love God, but the demon in our life is the spirit that keeps bringing the worst of every kind of friend. You are born again, but the people that come to like you, to want to marry you, are people who don't love God. Or you are a nice, well-meaning brother, but your friend is an arm robber. Your friend is a 419er. Your friend, what? Any kind of wrong relationship, whether you are aware or not, in the name of Jesus, I'm speaking to you. Let there be a separation right now. And I pray for you. If there is any deceiver in your life, may my God expose them in this season. I know you don't like the prayer, but let me pray for you. If there is any deceiver in your life, I say it again, may the God of heaven expose them in this name. Whatever has tampered with your love for God, there is something called first love. First love is fire, fire for God, 
fire for the house of God that they have to advise and encourage you now and say let us go he said I was glad not I was angry not I was dragging let me tell you if the passion for the house of God is dying in your life it's not a sign of spiritual growth it's a sign of an attack even if you think it's happening because you are a man of God that church they are not sharing anything that spirit is the spirit of the Antichrist I declare fresh passion for the things of God fresh passion for the house of God you used to wake up in the morning and the first thing you think about is your Bible but now you wake up the first thing is your phone the first thing is email the first thing is uh, what they call all those things social media all those things you are doing and before you know it you spend one hour there you say let me just do it for five minutes you wake up by three o'clock and you say i will study my bible but quickly you watch nigerian film all kinds of things in the name of jesus those things are not bad don't get me wrong but i don't care whatever it is if it is as taking the position of god i declare let it return back to his rightful position let me rebuke the spirit of laziness before we share the grace because let me tell you i have seen people as a man of god and as a leader i have seen people who will never become anything listen nigerians and especially we around here let's trust god for grace to be serious when a young man is snoring your way you are sleeping you watch movie till 1 a.m and then you sleep till 11 a.m. You are signing poverty with your destiny. Both God and Satan agree that laziness leads to suffering. Are we together? There are many of us here. I, I don't hate you. You know I love you with all my heart. But your deliverance needs to be laziness. 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 I'm not as concerned about our sisters. But these our brothers. You are the ones I'm talking to. Sis, that doesn't mean that sisters should be lazy because some of you god is even speaking to you through this reduce those movies reduce all those facebook thing and all of that and sit down gentlemen receive grace grace to stay awake when others are sleeping believers are lazy people and we just imagine that just because we have the anointing things will happen just like that if you are a man here and you are a married man please hear me and you know you are not catering for your family i love you but i'm telling you the truth by the word of god you are not being responsible no matter what the excuse is receive grace tonight to sit down and find out what do i need to do to feed my family let no man believer here born of God you return back home and there's no food and they are asking you and you are acting as if that they have not paid school fees say what will I do is he responsible is he responsible before you have a child think and plan what are we going to do with this child that is coming not just that you give birth and then you start inconveniencing people in the name of Jesus I declare the discipline to be diligent and the discipline to be responsible I release it upon you now every entitlement mentality that makes you believe someone somewhere should walk and just come and give you free success i cancel that wrong mentality now yeah. hallelujah we speak peace over zaria yeah. we speak peace over kaduna state yeah. and we speak peace over this nation yeah. We decree and declare that whether it's in the political or the economic sphere, we declare that Christ must be glorified in this season. In the name of Jesus Christ. And for all of you who are doing one thing or the other, whether job, whether ministry, whatever it is, I declare multiplication of results. In the name of Jesus Christ. Before we take the altar call, I want to encourage you, please listen, please listen. Everyone, next week, Friday, next week, we're going to have Koinonia on Sunday. It's, 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 it's our SOM graduation, we'll announce that shortly. But on Friday, please listen, we're all waiting upon the Lord, we're fasting, okay? 
there's no koinonia so we're going to trust god please when we say wait upon the lord minimum minimum at least minimum four o'clock if you fast and end by 12 except you are a child or except you are on a serious medical this thing if if you are not on a medical program and you fast and end by 12 i think you are lazy to whom much is given much is required six hours alone is too small you have to be serious and if you fast and all you do is sleep god too will have to forgive you because you didn't maximize is this not the fast i have commanded there is a fast that is hunger starvation but there is a genuine fast listen to messages so friday please uh, media make sure you announce it friday we are fasting and we are fasting the goal listen carefully three things number one our spiritual health are we together number two we're interceding for this ministry we're speaking the next level we're declaring we're praying over this ministry are we together now and then the third you can add whatever prayer point but particularly our spiritual lives and then you are praying for the ministry and you know prayer band take note of this and all other departments take note every department should allocate some time at least that you can pray i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us too Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.